of the tape for this light heavyweight battle. Both men, 1-0 and in their professional careers. Jimmy War Lugo, definitely the older fighter. He's definitely got the bigger reach, too. That's a huge advantage. Let's see if he can keep that. All right, let's get things officially underway. Here is the voice, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Windstar World Casino and Resort. We kick it off now. The prelims begin in the light heavyweight division set for three five minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 203.4 pounds. His professional record one and zero, oh, fighting out of Corpus Christi by way of Alice, Texas. Jimmy War Lugo. And across the gauge, his adversary out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 205 and one half pounds. He too, as a professional, stands at 1 and 0. Oh, he fights out of Denver, Colorado, presenting Grand Neal. In charge, your referee, Jaron Vallel. Jaron Vallel, our referee for the first fight. Here tonight inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. Jimmy Lugo, Fighter. Grant Neal, Fight. and we are underway. Blue gloves for 33-year-old Jimmy Lugo. Red gloves for 24-year-old Grant Neal. Grant Neal doing exactly what he likes to do, get inside. He's very strong, comes from a football background. That's where he started his athletic career at, switched into MMA. Very strong, very good when he's on the ground on top. We'll see if he can actually put Jimmy there, though. Was a freshman All-American fullback, John, won a Division II National Championship at CSU Pueblo. Finished five of his six amateur wins and unbeaten early on in his professional career. This man with a very nice straight right hand off the left. He's got double unders right now, so we'll see if he can do something with his position. Jimmy Logo trying to push him against the fence so he cannot straighten him out. It's a good drive by Jimmy Logo. Grant Neal surrounded by some tremendous coaches, fighters, former fighters. Most notably, Nate the Great Marquardt, his mixed martial arts coach in Denver, Colorado. Brandon Gertz, Neil Magny, Justin Gaethje, his head coach, Jake Ramos. He's working out with a lot of very quality fighters, so you know he's been, he's seen a lot, and he's done a lot. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to fight his first time he was supposed to be in Bellator. His opponent came in grossly overweight, and he didn't get to uh, get the, the end result of all that training, so it's good to see him in the cage tonight. Grossly was even being kind, I believe. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was, you know, I was trying to be nice, too. I, that, that was nice. That was nice. Both men with a football background. Jimmy Lugo, his lone victory professionally by knockout. And you see both guys are, Jimmy came in very amped up and going straight at Grant. Not probably what he needs to do, just needs to settle down. You're going to see Grant Neal takes a lot of Footwork movements. He steps side to side. You almost as you used to see Mike Tyson doing. He's gonna roll his head. He likes to come inside. And when he comes inside, he throws big uppercuts and big shots to the body. Grant Neal, a couple of amateur titles, including the Tough Enough Light Heavyweight Championship. His professional victory was by rear naked choke in just 46 seconds. Good wrestling, as well as good power. Just past the midway point of round number one. Grant Neal's got very, he's very strong in the lower body. You can just see it. You see how big his thighs are. So when he's throwing knees, there's a lot of weight. When you have weight behind that tool, oh, oh big right hand. hand. Right on cue, partner. Nice job by Jimmy Lugo to try to stay up. He got blasted with that shot. To stay up after that, that takes a lot. You were talking to, you were starting to talk about the frame of Grant Neal, and I was going to say, yeah, he's somewhat built like an All-American fullback. <laughs> you know where those thighs came from. You got that right. Strong lower body. Somewhat of a roller coaster ride. 
for 24-year-old Grant Neal, currently finishing his pre-med degree at the University of Colorado, Denver. 6-0 amateur record, 1-0 as a professional. Six of those seven wins have been finishes. Smart knee by Grant. People will try to push off. There's Nicely done. I like how he's setting up his takedown. <laughs> well, that was more of a tackle. Yeah. Let's just be honest. But right into Mount now, and you can see Jimmy Lugo is getting hit by somebody's shot, and they're starting to degrade his ability to defend himself. Tackles are set up, right? It's a tackle. It's a good setup. <laughs> Wash your fingers. Right now you're seeing what Grant is doing is he's putting pressure on it, but he needs to figure out, I don't have a lot of time left in this round, so I'm either going to go for a position to go for that submission to end this, or I'm going to damage you for the last 20 seconds of this round as much as I can so you're diminished even coming into that second round. Final 10 seconds of round number one of our first fight of the night. And a really good start for Grant Neal. Right clean. Your first round, Sit. All Look I at want the big right do. hand by Grant Neal. Lands right in the spot. But you saw that Jimmy Lugo was turning away from it, taking some of the intensity off of that blow. But it was the ability for Grant Neal to get inside, hit with that shot, then get a hold of him. Ended up taking him to the ground right off of this. Really good work by Grant Neal. Driving into him. Bellator fans, you want the same gear the fighters wear and more? Find new official Bellator MMA gear, Kimbo Slice, bobbleheads, and much more at bellatorshop.com. Let's go, seconds out, please. All the way back, all the way back. I'm not going to start the trend of 10-9 in round one, Grant Neal, right? You were waiting for me to say uh, it. You got it. It was definitely 10-9 Grant Neal in that round. John, your unofficial scorecard for round one. I don't have one. <laughs> don't put that pressure on me. Uh, Pushing forward. One of the things Grant Neal said pre-fight, I'm looking to maul him. And that has been his style of fighting thus far. Lugo now looking for a potential takedown. One of the things Grant Neal will tell you, he likes to put so much pressure that his opponent finally breaks. And you could see during that first round, he was getting, you know, he was doing those things that can cause that. But at this point, Jimmy Lugo is definitely right in this fight. He is not broken. He's fighting back. And the style in which Grant Neal is fighting is certainly taking away that huge reach advantage of Jimmy Lugo. Yeah, which you know, right now, as I'm looking at it, I think Grant Neal's fighting the exact fight he needs to fight to win. I think Jimmy Lugo needs to take a, a step back and think, you know what, let me keep this guy at range. When he comes inside with those rushes and he's moving his head, let me laterally move out and land the big shots that are going to slow him down, make him not want to come inside, and then just pick him apart from the outside. And let us not consider the factor of a man who lives and trains in Denver, Colorado at altitude. Uh -huh. It does have an effect on your gas tank. You got that one. We just call it big lungs. There you go. Someone's got big lungs, you got problems. Head control, head control, B. Lugo trying to hear that here. Time. Yep. Time. Hey, right here, don't move. Rest. Hey. No coaching, rest. Hold on. Time. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Referee Jaron Vallel Jaren Vallel starting to get right bossy right like someone that, that I know very well. Right yeah. <laughs> you can see Jimmy Lugo is hey, saying no and hit him in the ribs. And stand by on cage if door. those are his ribs, they're plastic. <laughs> exactly, because you could hear the cup <laughs> being hit. <laughs> so. That yeah, definitely hit the groin area. It was a good stop by the referee. Jimmy Lugo has no okay. idea exactly how Get ready to prep cage high or low open. his knee One really corner went. in from him. Let's go. <laughs> Time. There's five minutes to recover for a fighter. Blue corner, let's go. 
struck in the unfortunate spot in which Grant Neal was. One of the things you heard the referee say was no coaching, okay? And the reason there was no coaching. Okay, no coaching, we're just gonna talk about this. We think we have a coaching And we have something that possibly broke when he got hit. Depending on how we need to, okay? okay. All right, here we go. Where's my inspector? So stand right here. Okay, let's go, reinsert. And a lot of times when people don't realize is the referee not only sees something, you can hear where the cut goes from. We heard it from here. No, it's so not you can slot. tell a lot of times when that yourself. coin area Coach, is Coach, put it down. in there. Go in there. Yeah, I got you. Camera back. Camera off. Camera turn. Camera turn. Wow, now he's a director. Directors are not liking referee Jerry Vallel right now. Okay, hold on. Get it. That's what he's trying okay, to do is give Coach, some amount of decency Inspector, to our fighter. They claim they're good. All right, you're going to have a few seconds to get this fight started. Our cameraman, thoughts. Duke's looking at us with a big smile on his face. Wait a second. Like, he tells me to move. He can't tell me. Yeah, I'm much bigger than these guys. <laughs> I understand it was unintentional. Do you, hey, do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, anything crazy. Control yourself. Now here's, here's one just out of the blue for you because you've pretty much experienced everything. We are two minutes into the five minute potential break. Equipment is good. Let's say the cup is broken. And is there another one in, in the gym bag close by? I'm sure you could switch it out. Well, yeah. But is there another one that the, the corner has standing by? Normally, no, there isn't another one. But this is something a lot of people get confused and they'll say, well, you have five minutes to fix it. No, it's an equipment malfunction, it's a, uh, an equipment failure, and so a reasonable amount of time, if it's gonna take seven minutes to replace that piece of safety equipment, then we're gonna use the seven minutes and bring the fight back into the out. Matt Mitrio needed about 17 minutes to go grab a new mouthpiece against Sergey Caritano. Yeah, that was not good. Not good at all. So the fight continues. Red gloves for Grant Neal, blue gloves for Jimmy Lugo. When all kidding aside, that situation handled very well by referee Jaron Bilal. Yeah, it was, because there's a lot, there's just a lot of things going on, and you, sometimes you'll get guys that'll bring a towel in or something like that to put around, but as long as you can handle it, no, no one is offended by anything, you're doing the right thing. Duke will meet him later. But, yeah, Duke, Duke is pissed because the cameraman, <laughs> he got mauled by the referee with, with words. <laughs> Bellator crew, obviously a family. And this is where I was saying, Jimmy Lugo being smart, stayed in the outside, keep that middle of the cage, because every time that Grant Neal gets a hold of you and puts you into the cage, he's in the position of able to land knees, and that was a good knee right there. He's also attacking the legs, and when you've got your back against the fence, it's difficult to be offensive with your legs at all because you just can't you can't move it back to bring it forward to have any kind of energy and power on it. And as we mentioned on the tail of the tape, Lugo much taller because he raises that leg and it kind of hits the bad spot naturally. Yeah, sometimes it's it's difficult when you've got a guy who is a shorter, squattier fighter that when you have knees coming into play, it's difficult to bring these. You can bring them up towards the face easier but getting them down into the legs and around the body, sometimes it's not that, that easy for you. One minute on the clock here in round number two. Much closer second five minutes than what we saw in a pretty dominant round one for Grant Neal. And this is exactly where I think Jimmy Lugo needs to be, right in the center of the cage. Not where Grant Neal, you know, he can try for that tackle, but he's done a good job as far as stopping the, the normal takedowns. And just use your length from the outside, counter if he's coming in. All this is gonna get him that position where he's gonna be the one landing, and Grant Neal is gonna have to take those exaggerated movements to try to score. Walked right into that. Both of them did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got a good position right here with that head around. No time to really work with it, though. Quickly! Here we go, we're over here. Hey, 
Don't forget, tonight, we are live on Paramount Network. Two of Bellator's top middleweights fight for contention when John Salter collides with Costello Van Steenis. Plus, King Mo Luol returns for what could very well be his final fight inside the Bellator cage. That comes your way tonight at 9 on Paramount Network. Round two, partner. Round two is a close round. Right, you take a look at everything back. that was Please happening. Fight. I can see the judges going each way. I think in the end, Neil landed the actual heavier knees that were legal, and that could be the fight. difference in the way they scored. Third and final round. Both men making their Bellator debut here inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. Grant Neal fighting out of Denver. He's in the Red Gloves, Jimmy Lugo. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, Texas, by way of Alice, Texas, in the Blue Gloves. Let's see the level of sense of urgency from Lugo here in the third and final round, based on what John said, a very tough round number two to judge. There you saw Jimmy Lugo trying to go with the Superman punch. He's switching stances back and forth, but he does not seem comfortable when he's in the southpaw stance. Good take Very nice. Caught the leg. Overhead right. Nice. Nice. Nate Hartquart, not just one of the more successful fighters, in the history of the game, but always came in with a very high fight IQ. Uh, Nate Marquardt is he's one of the pioneers when you're looking, he fought in Pan Crace for a long time. Yeah. You know, King of Pan Crace, fought in the UFC forever. He's a, just a dynamite fighter, was a dynamite human being. Great position for Grant Neal, trapping that arm, opening up with that left hand. There he is, Nate the Great. Right now, Nate's feeling good about what's happening. Jake Ramos. Nice. Quality human being who was in a lot of great battles. Jimmy Lugo definitely needs to get his right arm back. It is trapped right now, and that is causing him a world of problems in stopping what Grant Neal is doing. There you go, that's fine. Good control. I do not know why he is holding that ankle. That is not going to be what's going to get him out in any fashion. He should bring that back inside, use it to post up, try to get himself back. He's back against the fence, start to get himself back to his feet. Wrestlers love the turf. This is what we're talking about. Get that hand back. Now put it to the ground, start to get myself back to my feet. And he does. He's got a lot of ground to make up, though. He took a lot of shots. Two minutes on the clock. Here in our first fight of the night. Nice go behind by Grant Neal. So when you got both hands clasped around the body and torso of your opponent, you can usually do whatever you want and take picking them up, bringing them to the ground. It's a horrible position when you're Jimmy Lugo and he's got that put down. Free fight, Grant Neal said his strength, his wrestling and his power, and he certainly has showcased his wrestling during this, his Bellator debut. Hand over the mouth of Jimmy Lugo, trying to affect the breathing. He's controlling that right arm again. Pushing that right arm through his legs. Watch your back of the head. Making it so it's not effective in trying to, to stop what he's doing with his left hand. There he goes, pressing that leg into it again. Very smart and effective fighting by Neil. Under a minute. Third and final round. Get 
to mount. And he's just trying to posture, get his hips so he can land bigger shots. Lugo getting back to his feet. Too little, too late in this round, though. He needs to break free and go for it. Round one and round three, partner, look very similar. Yeah, no doubt about who won those. Very simple. Yes, he runs at the top. Right clean, right clean. Here we go. They right go right the clean. distance. Impressive Bellator debut for Grant the Truth Neal. Here's the power right there of Neal. That right hand landed flush. That was in the first round. This was his drive takedown. Would you, would we like to say last double. That's almost like a football tackle from the football from the fullback. And then Neil going out when he grabbed the leg. Never really let Jimmy Lugo out of this position. Lugo would work hard, get back to his feet, but unable to get free of Grant Neal. Michael C. Williams has our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Chris Lee, scores it 30-26. David Thierry scores it 29-28. to Derek Cleary, 30-26. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Grant Neal. Unanimous decision victory for Grant the Truth Neal. Successful in his Bellator debut. Our tail of the tape for this one, the half breed, Caesar Bennett, making his professional debut against Christian Payne Edwards. Want to know with that pro debut, but 78.5, that's a big reach advantage Christian Edward brings in. Michael C. Williams once again. Tonight here, Bellator 233 will stay now in the light heavyweight division scheduled once again for three five minute rounds. We'll introduce first the blue corner at six foot weighing in 192.8 pounds. Tonight, making his professional debut, he fights out of National City, California, Caesar Bennett. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at six foot five, weighing in 205.9 pounds as a professional. One win, no losses, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Christian Payne Edwards. In charge of the action, your referee, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee, and an impressive professional debut right here for Christian Edwards. That was Christian against Justin Varga, and he just blasted him and then elbowed him into submission. Finally, the referee steps in. This is a guy that works out with John Ralph, Jones at ready? Jackson Wink, and he is Fight. a stud. John Jones, Patchy Mix, Diego Sanchez, and Greg Jackson, Mike Winklejohn. Christian Edwards just turned 21 on Tuesday. He is in the red gloves. Oh, it's over, Bennett, and it is over. Just like that! Wow! 54 seconds in his Bellator debut. And let's get the official time for this one. Watch this left high kick. You see the hand drop down right on the button. He is out, standing up. Head comes back. A huge knockout win for Christian Edwards. That was as clean as it gets. Listen to this. Oh, sounded like a baseball going out at Dodger Stadium. John, that ties him for the 10th fastest knockout in Bellator history ties him with the I knockout that. that Javi Ayala I know, but it's put on Sergey Teratonov at Bellator Friday, 163. Well, that everyone looks for their <laughs> highlight reel moments. I can guarantee you that's going to be on Christian Made Edwards for quite easy, some man. time to come. That was a beautifully placed and timed kick. Got right here. Hopefully Caesar Bennett is going to be okay. Two Bellator wins in a total time of one minute and 10 seconds. And Mike Winklejohn 
Great strike you know, coach. Great money. coach overall sitting back going, yeah, I worked on that kick with him. Oh, yeah. Well, you know that Jackson Wink is over there going, well, he doesn't get paid by the minute. He got that right. Caesar Bennett is up. He is fine, which is great news. And that is a very happy celebration of a 21st birthday for Christian Edwards. To make it official, once again, here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end suddenly. 16 seconds, round number one, the winner by knockout, Christian Payne Edwards. The head kick finish for Christian Edwards in just 16 seconds. Congratulations to the member of the Jackson Wink MMA team. Our tale of the tape, Romero Cotton, 3 and 0, 29 years old, three years younger than his opponent, Jason Parada. You can see that Jason Parada is much taller, much longer reach, but Parada is similar to Cotton. They both like the grappling game. The height and reach advantages John talked about, and once again, Michael C. Williams. From Windstar, World Casino and Resort here at Bellator 233, we go now to the middleweight division. Scheduled for three five minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At six foot four, weighing in 186.7 pounds, his professional record three and three. He fights out of Dallas, Texas, presenting Jason Parada. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 186 pounds, even as a professional. He's undefeated at three and zero, oh, fighting out of San Jose, California, by way of Hutchinson, Kansas. Introducing Romero Shonov Cotton in charge. Your referee, Kerry Hatley. This is. Romero cut against Justin Reeser getting the rear naked choke. And then this fight against Willie Whitehead. Look at the knees. Too much for Willie Whitehead. Romero Cotton, big, strong, athletic, and a great wrestler. Ready? Ready? Let's go to work. Romero Cotton 3 0, all three fights inside the Bellator cage. Shown off in the red gloves. Jason Parada, whose longest fight has been three minutes and 57 seconds. Win or lose in the blue gloves. Six, four, Jason Prada against 5'10", Romero Cotton. Jason Prada, he trains out of the Rafael Romato Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school, so you know on the ground, his submission game is very good. I've watched it. Compete. I've watched him in his fights. He is very technically proficient when the fight hits the ground. So the question is, does Romero Cotton want to take him to the ground, especially in the beginning of the fight when Jason and Romero are both dry? I would say keep it on your feet right now, get that sweat going, and then start using your, using your wrestling. And there he is, our middleweight champion, Rafael Lovato Jr. This is where Romero needs to be careful that he's still dry, and this is where submissions can fall into place and they stick. So he needs to be very careful with his arms, head placement, make sure that he squares himself up. All three wins have obviously been first round finishes for Parada. If his longest fight is three minutes and 57 seconds. Well, two of his losses actually came off of, he had two fights that he was, he got injured, stepping back, had an ankle problem, and so he lost those two fights off of injuries. The knee and the shoulder, right? Yeah. Romero Cotton out of AKA. Romero controlling that left underhook, bringing it up high, which is a good thing for him to do to keep Jason against the fence. Get him a glove. Stop, stop. The fuck? Hell no. What? Again, we have an injury 
to Jason Parada. And it's That's over. That's what occurred. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, with the blue quarter unable to continue due to injury, the verbal tap ends it officially two minutes, 16 seconds. Round number one, the winner by TKO, still undefeated, Romero Shonov Cotton. That's always not the way that you want to have your arm raised, but a victory nonetheless, 4-0 oh for Shonov, Romero Cotton. All those wins here in Bellator. Ah, uh, the hits just keep coming inside the Bellator cage. Our tail of the tape for our next preliminary matchup. Kyle Crutchmer facing Robert Gidra on the silverback, taking this fight, John, on four days notice. Yeah, that's why you see that 170.4 compared to 175.8. Gidra did not make weight because he had a very short notice, but he has a big reach advantage and he wants to keep this fight on the feet against a great wrestler. Michael C. Williams. Tonight here at Windstar World Casino and Resort, we go now to the welterweight division set for three. Five minute rounds introducing the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 175.8 pounds, his professional record four and three, fighting out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, Robert Gindra. And across the cage is adversary out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 170.4 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated at four and oh, fighting out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Kai, who's going? Kirchner. The referee in charge, Michael Bell. Michael Bell, our referee for this welterweight matchup. Robert Gidron on four days notice said, don't play. You ready, huh? I didn't have ready? much time to prepare, so I'm gonna leave it all in the cage. Kyle Crutchmer in the red gloves, blue gloves for Robert Gidron. How did Kyle Crutchmer get involved with the sport of mixed martial arts? Well, he's a two-time All-American, two-time Big 12 champion from Oklahoma State under coach John Smith, thus friends with Daniel Cormier, thus moved to San Jose to train at AKA, 
thus 4-0 as a professional mixed martial artist. There has been a lot of uh, MMA fighters that started off being wrestlers at Oklahoma State. Not only Daniel Cormier, Randy Couture. Johnny Hendricks. Johnny Hendricks. We got a whole bunch. The Rochelle brothers. There's a lot. Right now, all of this that you're seeing, this pressure that Kyle Christian is doing, the big thing is you see that nice spread of the legs, but all he's got to do is change the angle of the body. It's going to change how his hands come together, change from a single leg, go to the double leg, come back to the single leg. Your opening will be there, and you'll get your Pull him out to finish. Drag him out in the open mat. DC and I used to always go back and forth, me being an Ohio native. <laughs> I'm like, the real OSU is in Columbus, Lock you know. He's like, Goldie, that, that is incorrect. It's just not true. That is incorrect. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's the Ohio. That's State why it's University. got a T in front of it. Lots. Correct. But what a pedigree and what a great job John Smith Change up the angles Excellent. on him. Some great wrestlers returning to outstanding mixed martial arts. This is what I was talking about. When you're, you're talking about a wrestler of, of pedigree and of high caliber, you just saw he was he was struggling, and you see Gidron thinking, I'm good here, I'm using this balance point, and he just changed the techniques, and all of a sudden that inside trip comes, the legs come out, right to the ground, beautiful takedown by Crutch. Nice pass into half guard. See Gidron trying to pull him down, try to get back to his feet. Good job by Gidron to get back to his feet. Just couldn't get any separation to get off of the fence. Let us not forget Mark Munoz. We talked about the Rochelts, Randy Couture, Don Fry, King Mo. Listed as at least in one publication as the top eight MMA fighters who attended Oklahoma State. As they would say, the list is long and distinguished. Correct. <laughs> Again with the same exact takedown attack. Robert Gidron is going to have to figure out a way to stop that pressure with that inside leg attack that's bringing him to the ground. You can only hold on because what he's doing by holding the arms and everything, there's strength involved, and that strength starts go, guys, to diminish work. over time, and your ability to hold that arm just goes away as the person just starts to roll their arm out through it, starts to land more strikes, and just your defense starts to just degrade. Especially on four days notice. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's part of the whole thing is, we tell guys all the time, you're going to be a professional. Well, then be a pro stay in shape because if you get that call on the four days notice, you know, hey, I have a gas tank. I can still go. Don't forget, come experience Bellator in person, as you saw a moment ago. It is the biggest and best combat sports show on earth, and it's coming to an arena near you. Check out ticket info at bellator.com. Get yours today. Next stop is Israel. Then a couple in Hawaii, then Japan. The world tour here in the fourth quarter. Uh, this very big year for Bellator Mixed Martial Arts. Dominant round one for 4-0 Kyle Kretschmer making his Bellator debut. Still having a hard time figuring out how to posture. Nice move into half guard. That's what you're looking for. You want to see him taking those moments when he has the opportunity to either change the position or land the strike, doing those things, and that's exactly what you just saw. Good elbow. Final seconds of the first five minutes of this fight. Live tonight, so. 9 o'clock on Paramount Network, Salter versus Van Steenis. Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy, 21st time the Bellator cage has been inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. 
getting set for round number two of this welterweight fight. Red gloves for Kyle Crutchmer, blue gloves for Robert Gibron. Comes out aggressively. Crutchmer slipping down. You gotta like at least what Gidron did in the first round as far as keeping himself from being damaged. He got he got taken down. Yes, he lost the round, but he didn't really get damaged in the round, so he went through that entire round without being damaged. Now, hey, here's your chance. Let's get it back. Keep an eye on his cardio. Right now, it looks all right. Was he decided to try to roll into a knee bar there? Did not work for him. And, uh, that was a, a gutsy move, chance, but not probably the most intelligent move at that time against a guy that's got really solid base. Crutchmer has finished no, three of go. his let four professional victories. You see Crutchmer trying to sweep one of the legs out. He's got control of the torso, he's got his hands clasped. Couple of those knees. Well, what the knees are high hurt, and what the knees are doing is when you see Gidron trying to, he's trying to break apart the hands. So bring the knees. Now he starts to have to take that hand off of the knee, off of your hands to try to block the knee, which only makes it to your hands can stay together. Gidron covered up and explodes back to his feet. Well done. He's got to turn himself right now. Grab the fence. Anytime you have a hold of your opponent's head in this position, you know I'm not doing the right thing. This is not good for me. I need to adjust. Midron, 18 amateur Level, fights. Go grab it. Go grab it. Played semi-professional football for four years. And this is where the, the, the cage is that beautiful balance point for you. Because on any wrestling mat, Robert Gidron would have been down. But when you've got that cage, you can use it as that point of balance to keep yourself up. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't grab, grab it in any fashion. He just used it to brace his body, and it worked. He would have been down or somewhere in the lobby. <laughs> Good elbows to the body of Kyle Crutchmer as we are just past the midway point of this three-round fight. John, as you talked about to me, Kyle Crutchmer has a lot to prove Stop. here. He's got that Separate. huge wrestling pedigree. We've seen the success of many Oklahoma Fight. State Cowboys. Crutchmer would like to be the next one. Crutchmer does he? He's got a lot of pressure on him because you, you got all those guys that came out of where you're from. Nice spinning back fist right on cue. So right here, switching, going for a Darce. See if he's able to make this work. We're gonna see him trying to roll his body off to his left. He gets that roll. It's gonna work creating more pressure with his arms. He let go of it. Right into a mount, but he's gotta get his arm free from where it's at. Let go of it. See if he can posture up and do some damage. Yeah, the real question here is, okay, you just attained this beautiful position. You got a great bond with your legs. What are you gonna do? Yeah. He's nice base, everything's beautiful. Yeah, he's not gonna get out, but you've got to do damage. I wanna see you start to posture up, especially with that arm trap now, where he's got that. If he can keep that arm trap, look what he can do with his left arm right now. So these, these are the moments that are saying, how are you progressing as an MMA fighter instead of just being arrested? Now he's got the back with one hook in. A moment ago, you talked about the grapevine on the legs. Crutchmer listed his two main training partners as Ed Ruth and Khabib Nurmagomedov, who controls the legs of his opponent on the ground better than anybody in the game today. You got that right. You got 30 seconds, bud. Leg sweep. Let's go, guys. Let's work. See, and right now you're seeing a pressure out of Kyle, but he's not doing anything out of it. If you create that pressure, then do something with it. You have all the knowledge necessary to create the takedown right now. Why are you not doing it? Is it you're trying to grab wind, or is it I'm just not feeling comfortable? Final seconds. 
of this round. Time. And that's the second round in a row. Kyle Kretschmer has basically stopped fighting with six, seven seconds left. Why are you stopping? Here's the spinning back fist. It hit off the forearm, but that's a good shot. Let those hands go. See the setup with his legs. He decides to do it. It catches Gidron right across the temple area. It puts him down. It's just a matter he's got to follow up. He's got to goes after him with the hammer fist, goes to the darts, but then let it go to try to take the bat. Crazy Bob Crook in the corner of Kyle Crutchmer. Robert Gidron, third and final round. And this is that moment where you have a guy who you have let stay in the fight. Yes. Dangerous. Third and final round. Bad things can happen. But either early for Gidron John or late, where he can let it all go and not worry about the cardio. That's it. That was a nice kick, and Crutchmer felt that. Utilize the hands to set up a takedown. That was good. Gidron's in this fight. Been in a defensive mode, but he's still going. And again, the clock here as it ticks down could be an advantage to Robert because he can let it all go. Well, he has showed that he has come into this. He's in shape. You can take and a you look talked at him. about it earlier. You can take a look yeah. at him, and he's not a guy that's not at ease. He just didn't have time in a camp to peak and get himself into that perfect placement so he can you know, really push hard throughout the fight. So he's, he's going to have to find those moments in the, in the round that he can rest, kind of grab his breath. But he's been able to do that at time by shutting Crutchman down, and he's got a full gas tank to go here in this last round. I need you to work, gentlemen. Let's go. <laughs> nice take down by Crutchman. He's got to keep it there to see if he can. And what he does in position. He's inside control. He just stepped himself right into a half guard. You'd like to see Crutchman take that left arm right now, bring it around, grab either the underhook or the arm, and start to circle him out towards the, his head off of the cage. That's going to help him keep him to the ground. Back up one more time. One week from tonight, we make our annual voyage to Israel. This time, packing a heavyweight punch as Sergei Karatanov faces off against Linton Vassell. That is next Friday at 9 o'clock on Paramount Network. Nice elbows to the head by Robert Gidron. Just trying to do something. He knows he, you know. He's got this guy that's glued like Velcro to his legs. Looking for the takedown. Right here, he's looking towards a switch, but he's not in the right position for it. Let's go, guys. Action. Crutchmer almost gets that. Gidron fights it off. I got to give Gidron a lot of credit, man. He's been working hard. He's going against a very good wrestler who knows how to take people down, and he is making it difficult. The entire time. Had that wide base, Crutchner still able to put him on his back. Steps over in the half guard. Or it's the Oklahoma State Cowboy Randy Couture would tell you the Turk. Where he did a lot of damage over the years. Uh, he was very proficient. When he got that leg, he liked to sit on that leg and just pound on it. Very difficult to move in any position. He had such a credible base. You think you can just move him and you try and it moves about three inches and it comes settling right back on top of you and you go, well, I did it. And you've trained with him enough oh, yeah, to know that yeah. that is the truth. Yeah. See, it seems, seems like a great idea at the time. For a man who walked his way to the hospital. <laughs> Glad that Randy's doing well. <laughs> Crutchmer has a very good opportunity right here to bring him back down to the ground. But again, he's letting him turn instead of creating the position. Stop. He's Stop. allowing Stop. Robert Gidron to get himself back. You want, if, you're, if you're Bob Cook, who is the coach of Kyle Crutchmer, you're wanting him to just push that much more. Create. Don't just wait. Create. 
So you can look at this two ways, partner. You can look at this as a fight in which Crutchmer could have done some things much more aggressively. You can also look at it as a great 15 minutes of tape to go back to and learn from and improve from. Well, no doubt about it. I don't care if it's a win or a loss. You should be learning from every fight you have. And the one thing I will say about Kyle Crutchmer, his inside trip is second only to Henry Cejudo's as far as what I'm seeing because it's beautiful when he decides to go to it and use it. But I will give Robert Gidron. Gidron is not settled up for any work. position. He's always battling himself back and not giving in. You gotta love the heart that he's brought into the cage tonight. Took the fight on Tuesday, and it will go the distance. Well Five. done by the silverback, Robert Gidron, against Kyle Crutchmer. Looking to go to 5-0 and oh as a professional. This is just a summary of the fight. Watch that outside trip right there. Use that outside trip beautifully to bring Gidron down multiple times in this fight. Here's your back spinning back fist. Actually hit him with the forearm. That can't break your arm. It happened to Paige Van Zant when she did it one time. But beautiful knockdown. And here's that takedown. Beautiful body lock takedown by Crutchmer. Picking him up, bringing him down. Just too much, too good with the wrestling. Another win for Kyle Crutchman. At least on my card. Judges have rendered their decision. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Chris Lee, David Thierry, Sal D'Amato. All three have it the same, 30 to 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Kyle Kutschman. Unanimous decision victory in his Bellator debut. Congratulations to Kyle Kutschman. We move forward in our preliminary action, our tail of the tape for this showcase. Janae Harding, Amanda Bell. Amanda Bell and Janae Harding both known to bring it. And with the official introductions, once again, Michael C. Williams. For those joining us worldwide on the Bellator MMA Global app, we welcome you to Bellator 233. The prelims roll on now. Featherweights inside the Bellator cage set for three five minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at five foot seven. She weighed in 146 pounds even. Her professional record six and six. She fights out of Spokane, Washington by way of Hubbard, Oregon. Amanda, the lady killer. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145.6 pounds as a professional. Five wins, three losses by way of the Gold Coast. She fights out of Sydney, Australia. Janae Hollowpoint Hardy. Let's go, it's great. And the referee in charge, Jared Fallell. Jaren Villal, our referee, Janae Harding, is a gamer. She is good. She's got very good kickboxing skills. When she gets on top of girls, you can see she goes after it. She doesn't just hold on. She is a vicious striker. If you're going to stand on the outside with Janae Harding, you're in for a long evening. Janae Harding, Amanda Bell. Here we go. Red gloves for Janae Harding. Blue gloves for Amanda Bell, who was on the receiving side of the 22-second knockout of Arlene Glenko the last time they fought right here inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. Well, Amanda Bell is what we call a brawler. She likes to, she'll take one to give one. And she is a gamer, but when you're in against someone that technically is good, and Janae Harding is technically very good in her stand-up, you need to be selective when you're going to make those rushes and try to attack her. Both of these fighters will definitely stand and train. You can see, you can see what Janae. Look at look at Janae trying to use the jab. She's setting up the feints. You see her giving that little feint, seeing the reaction of Bell. This is where Amanda Bell wants to be. Grabbing that leg was a big thing. She needs to keep her on the ground if she can. 
unable to. Both fighters with a background in karate. Both fighters very good with their striking. This fight, somewhat of a precursor for our Leslie Smith, Arlene Blenko matchup at 145 on the main card tonight. That's a beautiful one, too, by Jenny and Jermaine. Harding in the red, Bell in the blue, who recently moved to Spokane, Washington to train full time there. Good kick. That was a very nice kick, well set up. Sometimes you see in Janae, she starts to she starts to come forward and do something and she stops herself and it's like, just go through with it. You stopping it creates more of a problem for you than if you just flow through with it. Janae Harding holds a win over Janae Kavanaugh. The impressive performance indeed at Bellator 207. Nice little shot by Amanda Bell there, landed it. Be very careful, you're seeing that right hand set up by Janae and she's bringing the left foot behind it. If she, if Amanda drops her hand down and that kick lands, it's gonna do a lot of damage. Nice kick to the body by Janae Harding, a beautiful right hand. And another one, John. Answered by the kick. Uh, she's starting to feel good as far as her distance. She's actually stepping inside for it, not staying to the outside, controlling a boxing range. I like how she fights long. Turns that shoulder over, especially when hollow point Janae Harding lands that right hand. Amanda much more compact in her frame. See Amanda starting to lean her head back because that left jab has been touching her continuously when she throws it. Amanda just needs a head movement to help her get inside. Her head right now is pretty stationary and it stays on the center Mutual line. Corner. Right here, please. Right here. Right here. Just right here. Jared Vallel has had a lot of problems with equipment malfunctions today. So he's, get, he's getting tested as far as his, uh, his knowledge. He's going to have a timeout for a wardrobe We're dealing with wardrobe. Because of the terror in the uh, clothing of Janae Harding. So any sponsors that Janae had, sorry. <laughs> well, hopefully she's got them on her backup shorts as well. There's a little tear in the back of her shorts. She's fine. Uh, okay. No shirts. We're good. Okay. We'll pick it up right away. We're good. You're good. Can I see? Yeah. All right. Let's do this. No cameraman. Here we go. Good job, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. Fight. There's the biggest sponsor of them all. Bellator MMA on the way. Oh, line. beautiful Big head kick. kick. What did Looking I tell you? The finish right here, right now. Told you that head kick was going to be there for her. You could see her setting that up, and Amanda kept dropping that right hand down. That's why I said that kick's going to come up, and if it reaches the spot, it's going to do damage. Those shorts have made a difference thus far. <laughs> I don't think the shorts had anything to do with it. Janae looks very sharp tonight. Janae doing a good job trying to bring that knee up to hold the arm down. Already into half guard. Opening up. Good shots by Janae. In Harding's last fight, that went the distance, she showed the evolution of her abilities on the ground, John, and I think that that has made her more comfortable letting her hands and feet go here in this matchup tonight. Oh, no doubt about it. You talk about starting off in deep waters. Janae Harding's first, you know, one of her first amateur fights was Megan Anderson, and she's, she's just had this list of really tough opponents that she has fought throughout her career here, here, with, a, here, with little here, experience, here. but she keeps getting better and better and better. And you're seeing the results of all of that right now. Good first round for Janae Harding. Right there, right 
I was talking about that left high kick to the head, right on target, hand just a little bit low. Sits Amanda Bell back. You can see she's there. Look at that arm coming out to brace her fall. That tells you that that, that brain is still engaged. She's able to control her body, but it definitely put her down. Does anybody switch kick anymore? Good job. <laughs> Not the back. same as what, you know, really, no. I mean, it's really seriously. become something of the past in the way that MMA fighters approach because yeah. there's too much to tell with it. Absolutely. Here we go. But Fight. the switch kick was always the big deal. It was. Not anymore. And you just bring that left leg up, or their off leg, if you will, and fire away, as we saw a moment ago, from Janae Harding. She almost landed that left high kick again. She's going to go back to that well until Amanda shows something that tells her, oh, I, I can't do it anymore. Really like the way that Janae is looking with that jab, though. That jab and her hands are looking good. Amanda trying to make it a dirty, gritty fight getting inside. And you've been impressed, John, with how much more refined the striking of 25-year-old Janae Harding is becoming. Yeah, well, it, just in watching the two fighters, the difference is watching Janae will take her head off of the center line when she throws, but Amanda doesn't. And that's why Amanda's getting hit more than Janae is. It's not that Janae is not going to get hit. Amanda is touching her. But the little two-inch movement off that center line creates a problem in making that punch land. And so that's all part of training. That's saying that, you know, she's learning and she's just getting better at what she's doing. A very intelligent broadcast partner of mine with a huge brain said this could be somewhat of a brawler versus boxer matchup. <laughs> Something like that. That guy was smart. Very smart. Still very smart. <laughs> And when you see it, like Amanda Bell, we know, I'm watching her fight and the things that she's done in the past, she's very strong. And she's rugged, she's got power. And she told me I did a fight of hers long ago and she was gonna fight Ronda Rousey's best friend and Marina Schaefer. And she said, you know, just so you know, I'm gonna knock her out and it's gonna happen in the first minute of the fight. I said, okay, we'll see. Sure enough, she did it, she had the power to do it, so. She's, she's a tough game fighter. It's just that sometimes when someone is that athletic person with really good technique, and they just start getting the better of her in the fight, but she never stops. Took never only 37 her. seconds, by the way. <laughs> is that what it was? Yeah, 37 <laughs> seconds. And you talked about Janae Harding, the amateur loss to Megan Anderson. Her setbacks, Jessica Rose Clark, Arlene Blenko, who fights on the main card tonight, yep, and Amber nice LeBron. Setback. Beautiful reversal by Amanda Bell. That was a beautiful setback by Janae. Amanda Bell rolls with it, uses the momentum, comes out on top. Big elbows right now by Amanda Bell. She's got very good ground impact. She does. She's strong, man. She is tough. She does not stop. This is her moment. She needs to just go after it. Trying to stay very close and connected to hollow point Janae Harding. Round two, fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Still has a double underhooks, but Janae's able to turn that position, face her. That's good, smart fighting. She's got that underhook back. Now we're back to basically a 50-50 position. Janae Harding, a Shotokan Karate black belt. Amanda Bell, as I mentioned, with a background in karate as well. Nice takedown by Amanda Bell going back with the elbows. Big elbows, heavy ground and pound. This is how Amanda likes to fight. She likes to be the bully. And a lot of these are not landing, let's be honest, but she's going after it. And it looks good to the judges. They can't always, especially if you've got a, you're a judge on the far side and you're just seeing that arm pumping, you just sometimes can't see exactly where it's landing. Nice mount position. Janae needs to move, continue to move out. Knee and belly. Look at you. <laughs> Beat you to it, didn't you? You did. 
Great and job by Amanda to stay on top on the ground. She's just using heavy hips to put pressure. You see that arm coming through, trying to drag her back down. The definitive advantage on the ground here in round two. Janae Harding looking to survive the next 20 seconds. Janae needs to be careful of that arm triangle choke right now. Got her arm safe. 10 seconds. The aggression here in this round from the lady killer Amanda Bell. Very impressive round by Amanda Bell. This is the takedown Janae initiated, but you see the reversal by Amanda Bell. Elevates over, comes out on top, doesn't quite get to the mount, but that was a beautiful reversal and opened up with these elbows. Now, a lot of those are not hitting the elbow. It wasn't hitting Janae completely, but some of them did. And it's just that fact that she's going after it. She's looking like she's trying to finish the fight. That's what the judges want to see. Arlene Glenko, Leslie Smith. What could be the final fight for King Mo? And Tyrell Fortune looks to remain unbeaten. All of his professional fights inside the Bellator cage. Third and final round. Harding in the red gloves, Bell in the blue gloves. Both ladies need to go back to what they did in their rounds. Janae needs to go back to what she did in the first round, and Amanda needs to go back to what she was doing in the second. You know, partner, and I mentioned earlier that Janae gained some confidence in her ground game in her last fight against Marina. She knows now she wants to stay off the ground with Amanda Bell. <laughs> You know, you could be working on it, but it just takes time. Yeah. It is, everyone thinks, oh, six months is going to change. Six months is going to change just a little bit. It takes years to be good at being on the ground. If you're on your back, how to protect yourself. Janae on her feet is the technically better fighter. Amanda on the ground is the technically better fighter. And Amanda said that when asked about Janae Harding. She said her strength, her stand-up, her weakness, her ground game. Well, everyone thinks that ground and pound, oh, that's, you know, all you do is hold them down and hit them. It's, there is an absolute science to being good at ground and pound. It is a technique, and there's people that are good at it, and there's people that are not. Spinning elbow. It's got a lot to do with the hips, doesn't it? It does, and, you know, the way that you create pressure with your hips, the way that you actually turn your hips when you're throwing shots so they have power and they do damage. So a very close fight with just under three and a half remaining. Top position now for Janae Harden. That was a mistake by Amanda Bell. Amanda got double underhook. She went to throw. Janae did not work for her. Janae ends up in the mount position, now has the back. Janae with five professional wins. She has not scored a victory by submission yet. Three minutes. Janae getting that second hook, that's very important for her. She needs to now see where her hips are off of Amanda. She needs to center her hips back onto the back area of Amanda. Amanda wants to keep her off on that angle and keep on creating more of an angle to the point where she turns inside of that. Amanda has been the victim. That's what you're seeing Amanda yeah. do right now. Nice job. I was about to say the victim of the rear naked choke three times. As Amanda Bell changes position right now, she's able to get on top. What you just saw, Mike, is inexperience. You saw Janae knew. She knew that I'm losing this, but instead of saying, I'm losing it, let me switch to something so I don't lose position, she tried to hold on to something that she knew wasn't going to work, and now that's why she's on the bottom. She's got to get back up quick. Because Amanda Bell has been dominant in top position. Right now, instead of holding on with that leg, Janae needs to keep turning her hips, come out the back door. Don't allow Amanda to stay in that position. Her arm is trapped there. You come out the back, keep on swinging through, come out the back door, slide out. She's in trouble right here. Big shots. There's what I was talking about, coming out the back door. She does it. Drive forward now. You see Amanda try and come out and talk. Both girls making mistakes, but it's because they're tired and they're both going for it. 
Great job by Amanda to come back into the mount position. Janae was almost out there. I need you to defend. Instead, she's in big trouble. This fight yeah, might try. Hammer fist. Janae's trying. She's trying to move. She's just not being successful. It's just a matter of does the referee think that she's trying to intelligently defend herself? And she is. She's moving. That's why he's not stopping it. Well, our referee, 50 seconds on the clock, third and final round. Body lock for Amanda Bell. Amanda Bell trying to keep her way back, staying centered in his seat. Notice how where her hips are centered up on her opponent. That makes her heavy, that makes her solid. Watch the back of the head. Yeah, she knows. More shots. Yeah, she's starting to eat shots and not move. That's going to be the difference. Oh, Hit is all over. Third round finish for Amanda Bell. Dominant on the ground against Janae Harding. Vicious Rest round and pound it. partner, Rest as you've it. talked about. Yes. This is what we're talking about, Amanda Bell getting position and just opening up, not stopping, trying Coach, to finish the fight. Okay. Look at she's those elbows, frustrated. look at the punches. Just saying, I am gonna go after you with everything I have, try to finish this fight, hammer fist at the end. That was the difference between a technically very good fighter in Janae Harding and that tough, gritty, never give up attitude of Amanda Bell. Great win for Amanda Bell. Third win inside the Bellator cage. All three victories in Bellator for Amanda Bell have been by knockout or TKO as she finishes Janae Harding in the third and final round to make it official once again, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end four minutes, 44 seconds, round number three. Referee, Jaron Brillell, waves it off due to strikes. The winner by TKO, Amanda, the Lady Killer Bell. Survived a very difficult round number one and took over to win and finish the fight with just 14 seconds on the clock. Congratulations, Amanda Bell. 11 and 0. Jordan Young from American Top Team looking to remain unbeaten with the official introductions once again, Michael C. Williams. Here at Bellator 233 from Windstar World Casino and Resort, we go back now to the light heavyweight division. Scheduled for three five minute rounds, we introduce the blue corner at six foot three, weighing in 205.6 pounds. pounds. His, His professional record seven wins, just one defeat by way of Lithuania. He fights out of St. Louis, Missouri, Sorry, presenting Julius Ambritskas. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot four, weighing in 203.5 pounds. The undefeated professional stands with 11 victories, no defeats. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, introducing Jordan Young. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee, these two light heavyweights with a combined record of 18 and 1. Jordan Young, 6 and 0, inside the Bellator cage. On Glickus making his Bellator debut with that impressive record of 7 and 1. Red gloves for Young, blue gloves for the native of Lithuania. Julius has never been to the judges in his 12 combined amateur and professional fights. Moved to the U.S. at age 14. And look, and Likas looks like he's built out of granite. He has got no fat on him at all. Just solid at 205 pounds. He's huge because Jordan Young is a big man, and Jordan Young 
has had just an impressive career, an impressive career here in Bellator. He has just dominated everybody, only going to one decision. Every other fight he's had has been a submission, Mike. Six and zero in Bellator, five straight wins by submission, four in the first round. To expand on the point, John, that you just talked about, one of his training partners and coaches at American Top Team, King Mo, who will fight later tonight on Paramount Network. That's it. Separate the punches. Jordan does all the little things really well. You watch how he controls the bicep, he controls position, brings the hand across, he'll frame off, hit it with an elbow. He's just very talented, very calm when he's fighting. Nice straight right hand by Lucas. He said of his greatest strength, I'm still trying to find out. I'm trying to be good at everything. I started as a good wrestler, but now I'm starting to finish people with strikes. Well, that's what MMA is all about, putting it all together. And it's seven and one at 28 years old. That's exactly what Julius Sanglickis is doing. He's definitely controlling the, the, just the position. Look how he's crushing the space on Jordan Young. And that takes a, a big tool away from Jordan. Jordan's kicks are very good. And every time he crushes that space, it just kind of takes that uh, Jordan looks and goes, I'm not in space to be able to throw this. So it takes that weapon set away, which is very smart. Fourth straight fight at 205 for Jordan Young. Native of Des Moines, Iowa. Lives in Boca Raton, trains, as I mentioned, at American Top Team. He's in the red gloves. He's looking to remain unbeaten in his professional career. You see, as soon as that space is back and Jordan feels like he has it, he goes after the kick, and as soon as that space is crushed, all that kicking stops. St. Charles MMA, the home of Julius Songlickis. Nice straight right hand by Amlickis. Even that lead hand in the face of Jordan Young. He's doing a beautiful job of pressuring and controlling distance. Right now in the open, this is where Jordan wants to be. This is where he's going to be more comfortable. He keeps on feeling that pressure by Amicus and backing up. That's causing him a problem. Big heavy head. kicks. Big heavy leg kick. That one hurt. You could hear the thud. John, you made the comment that Julius is European in his stand-up game. What do you mean by that? What I mean by it is that take a look very straight as far as his body position and his upper body. If you remember back, the Europeans used to be very straight up and down while guys from the U.S. and different places, you know, Mexican fighters are bent at the waist a lot and give a, a lot of hurt and jerk, but that straight up Eastern European style, that's what you're seeing right here. Ryan Linkus, but he's good with it. And his, his kicks are fast. He's got a good lead leg kick. Nothing wrong with anything he's doing right now. Lansing head kick did no damage, had no effect on Julius. Again, heavy leg kicks to the left thigh of Jordan Young throughout this first five minutes. Good start in his Bellator debut. Scorecard of round one. Round, buddy, oh, no doubt in my buddy, mind, that, that round was won by a, a guy that was pressuring forward, crushing space. Mr. Julius Anglinkas definitely is the winner of that round. Red gloves for Young, blue gloves for Anlinkis. I like how he paused with that left hand and then sets up that kick once again. John, you don't always have to land the jab, but when you have that left hand out, as Julius does, you take away the vision of your opponent. Well, you not only take her out the vision, you also use it as a measuring stick. 
and you keep him and you force them into what you're trying to do. That's what you're seeing Enlikas do is, is he's backing him into the cage and then he's pawing out with his left trying to lead Jordan to move towards his power in his right hand and then he throws the right hand. So far so good. Footwork is what Jordan Young right now, his footwork is essential in changing this fight and what's occurring. You utilize your footwork, move yourself where you want to be in the cage. He can pressure, but all you got to do is use lateral movement and that'll take that pressure and make it to where your back's not against the cage. Every time you see him getting his back against the cage, it's because his feet have stopped moving. Jordan Young, a little slip on that kick. Just 24 years old. His professional debut was at 170, fought a lot at 185. A couple of contracted fights here in Bellator. And as I mentioned, this is his fourth straight fight as a light heavyweight. And Lincoln's just made a very big statement. You know, when Jordan went to the ground and he's standing over him, he's basically saying, go ahead and get back up. He's saying, I respect your ground game, but I am beating you up in the stand-up game. I'm going to put you back to where I'm doing well. And he's able to get Jordan Young to keep circling into that powerful right leg kick. And Leak is his corner telling him, let it go, let it go. You're backing him up. And they're right. When you back him up and his back gets up against that cage, there's nowhere for him to go. So when you bring your attack, he can try to move his head out. It's going to hit the back of the cage. It's going to stop it. You can go to the body. There's all kinds of opportunities. You create that situation. Don't just give it up. 5-0 and oh is an amateur. 7-1 and one is a professional. And on Linkus has finished all 12 of his combined victories. past the midway point of this three-round fight. Red gloves for Jordan Young, the Lithuanian fighting out of St. Charles, Missouri, in the blue gloves. You know, both guys firing, but if you're watching the shots, they're landing with more impact overall. It's Julius Antlik is landing the heavier blows. That's why you see Jordan having problems stopping his attack, going backwards. He's having problems with the stand-up style of Enlikas. And Julius, John is a guy who fought at heavyweight before, coming down to 205, where I mentioned Jordan Young has worked his way up to 205 pounds. Yeah, Jordan started off as a middleweight. But he had that such a big frame, six foot four. This is where you got to rely on that footwork that your coaches have been talking to you about. Move your feet, get yourself to where you want to be, and then think about what offensive attack you want to bring. Having his back against the cage is not where Jordan Young wants to be in the standout. Again, notice that every time Enlikas comes forward there, crushes his face, Jordan Young, zero kicks, and having problems with setting his feet throw his hands outstanding sprawl and much like we saw earlier in the round julia says let's just get up and kick a little punch a little and i'll land some more man he stays very active very active very controlled you don't see a lot of winging shots a lot of straight punches not a whole lot of wasted energy by Julius Antley because he's looking good because he's fighting a stud fighter. Jordan Young is undefeated 11-0 and there's a reason because he is good. Five straight finishes for Jordan Young. Final seconds of the round. How are we doing, champ? All good? Five minutes remain. And Jordan Young has some work to do. I think you're right about that. Uh, that uh, undefeated record around, buddy, you ready? is on the line buddy, right here. Because right Fight. now I have him down two rounds to none. So he needs Fight. to do something special in this round. 
What needs to change for Jordan Young, John? Well, he needs to stop backing up. Every time you back up straight back, you've got a problem. So lateral movement, get yourself off of the fence, and look to utilize your hands to get inside to take him to the ground where he's already showed you, I don't want to be down there with you, and start to work that great submission game that you have. Nine wins by submission, nine of 11 victories for Jordan Young. Just look at the difference in the punches that Jordan Young's throwing for the most part. A lot of them are looping. They're starting to create a lot of time to get to the target. And, and Linkus, a lot of straight shots coming inside. Just little, not trying to knock you out with any of the shots. Just put his hands on you. It's very European in his stand-up. <laughs> it's very European in his stand-up. Man, I came yeah. up with that. I like that. On my own. I'm, after, sure, I'm sure you did. You told me. <laughs> Well, when you look at, you can see Enlikas does give lateral head movement side to side, which is good. Europeans just traditionally, not a lot of up down movement with the head. And so it's that straight up, you can see him right now, rolling his shoulders, but stiff in appearance, but effective in technique. Beautiful right hand that landed with power. That hurt Jordan Young. Nice body shot to follow it up. 90 seconds into the third and final round. A fight dominated by Julius Onlinkis thus far. There's another one of those kicks. Seven and one against 11 and 0. See the corner. Young looking on, Dean Thomas. It's amazing go, 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 go. how many great fighters have become great coaches at American Top Team. Mike Brown, Dean Thomas, King Mo is making the transition. They know what they're doing down there in Coconut Creek. Someone's cooking the meal, right? Dan Lambert's got himself a special place, doesn't he? It's been special for a long time. Yeah, it has. Past the midway point of the third and final round. Go. And every time you notice when Jordan brings his hands up really high, there's no offense that he can do out of that position. And he's also opening up his body, and you're seeing Anlikas start to look and start to go downstairs into that body. All of those shots, they are horrible when they hit. Hands go high in the kick connects. <laughs> Hands go low in the jab, and that right hand gets fired. And Likas is just feeling good. Anytime that you're able to control the position and pace of a fight like he's done so far, you know, you, it's the fight is running at your speed. So you can just continue to do this all night long because no one's pushed you past that point where you're uncomfortable. Right now, Jordan has been uncomfortable because Enlikas has created that pressure that has made him work. He's got damaged off of it. You see right now, that's totally defensive. No offense can come off of that position for him. Now he can be offensive. Now he cannot. And it's, that's what you're seeing from a guy that is just systematically breaking him down. Beautiful body shot, bringing it straight back up to a right hand. And Likas is seeing everything. He is so comfortable right now. Little tiny movements, nothing exaggerated. Just very efficient. One, two, one, two, one, two. No singular punches. There's the one, one, two. The corner of the Lithuanian. There you go. Move. This corner's got to be very happy with how he has performed tonight. Everything that he's doing is working That's for him. It, he's the one controlling this position. He's the one landing the good shots. He hasn't been hit by much that has really affected him at all. Jordan Young takes a look at the clock, under 20 now. Trying to open up with that big overhand right, see if he can create something. And it's just so smooth. Make, let me make this a compliment. Robotic, if you will. Yes. 
Exactly. But effective. Totally effective, man. He just won three rounds easily. There you go. And you, you got to be impressed. Yeah, it's stiff, it's robotic, but it's effective. Michael C. Williams to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we're going to your three judges at cage side. Chris Lee, Derek Cleary, Sal D'Amato, all three. Seen exactly the same, 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Julius Andrinskas. Congratulations on the victory. As I mentioned, Dominic. First time that Julius has gone to the judges' scorecards, but they were all 30-27, and he moves to 8-1 and one as a professional mixed martial artist. Our tale of the tape as we move ahead in our preliminary matchup, the one, the only, Logan Storley, set, he hopes, to move to 11-0 as a professional. Here's Michael C. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from Windstar World Casino and Resort, we go now to three five-minute rounds at a contracted weight of 175 pounds. Introducing the blue corner first at five foot eight, weighing in 174.9 pounds. His professional record: 13 wins, five losses. Fighting out of Cahokia, Illinois. Introducing Pretty Boy E.J. Brooks. And across the cage's adversary, out of the red corner, at five foot nine, weighing in 174.4 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. 10 victories without a defeat. Fighting out of Webster, South Dakota, presenting Logan Storley. In charge, your referee, Kerry Hatley. Kerry Hatley, our referee for this matchup between EJ the Pretty Boy Brooks and Logan Storm Storley. All right, man, that's what you work for. You ready? Ready? Let's go to work. Here we go! Storley in the red gloves, Brooks in the blue gloves. Webster, South Dakota. Hometown of one Brock Lesnar. Both men outstanding amateur wrestlers at the University of Minnesota. Storley, a four-time All-American, the 10th four-time All-American for the Golden Gophers. You're right, they're, they're both outstanding collegiate wrestlers, and that's why you've seen Jay Brooks with such great balance. Logan Storley has been able, not every guy that comes into MMA can carry their wrestling into being a good wrestler in an MMA cage. Logan Storley has been able to do that. He has been very effective with his wrestling being able to take guys down when he needs to, being able to control the top position, but his stand-up game is the story. It has gotten so much better, and now he is comfortable when he wants to be on his feet. Beautiful kick, that's the second time he's landed that right kick to the body. And again, his wrestling, you know, George St. Pierre never wrestled anywhere, but he had outstanding MMA wrestling. Logan Storley has that same outstanding wrestling. Six-time state champion. Yes, I said six-time. <laughs> because in South Dakota, you are eligible in seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. In seventh grade, he beat an 11th grader to win the state championship. Logan Storley, the junior Hodge Trophy recipient in high school, which is the college equivalent the Dan Hodge Trophy to the Heisman Trophy in college football. Danny Hodge, Jake Hager, you know. And this job by EJ to get himself back up, Logan drags him back down, and that's what heavy hips do. You, you're noticing the position of Logan Storley staying a little bit high to create a heavy pressure on the back and shoulder area of EJ Brooks. Logan at Hard Knocks 365, an amazing team led by great coaches, Henry Hooft, Tammy Barzini, Greg Jones, the three-time national wrestling champion, and ruthless Robbie Lawler is truly a mentor to Logan Storley. And there is the ruthless one. 
He's leaned out of our picture. <laughs> that Robbie, would be, move over. That, over. that would definitely yeah. be Robbie Lauder. Oh, there's yeah. a camera on me. I'm moving. <laughs> Good work. Robbie, we're trying Let's to get, get a look at you. Let's get some forearm pressure on that hand, I remember too. at Penn State, it was the second fight for Logan Storley inside the Bellator cage, and Robbie was there, John, and I said, what about this kid? And Robbie straight out looked at me and he goes, if I didn't believe in him, I wouldn't be here right now. There you go. Yep. Uh, and then he had that little grin on his face. The Robbie <laughs> the, Lawler grin. The, 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 the Lawler smirk. Yes. Right. Logan has just improved with every fight. You can see how he There's burns. a ruthless one. You know, a lot of people sit there and they'll take a win and it's like, oh, I was great. And he hasn't done that. He's been very smart in saying, uh, I have a lot to learn. How can I be better? And the use of Robbie Lawler as one of the mentors in helping him learn, even though he's winning, how do I do that better? That's made huge improvements in Logan Storley's game as a, as a fighter. And EJ's a pretty good wrestler himself, isn't he? EJ's an outstanding wrestler and is not used to being on his back. This is an awkward position for him. He's not really that comfortable. I've, I've seen him here once before in one of his fights. He got up right away because he's hard to hold on to. He is a good scrambler. But you can see that Logan is stopping that scramble. He's creating all these positions and just keeping that pressure that is keeping Brooks on the mat. Most of the time, he's trying to get to his side, but it putting him on his back, which is not where he wants to be. EJ's teammate, Julius Onlingus, just won his Bellator debut. EJ Brooks, five and one inside the Bellator cage. He is trained with T Wood, Tyron Woodley in the past. All this is Logan Storley's positioning with his hips. EJ's doing the right thing, trying to get himself up. And Storley is just stuffing it. He's blocking it. He's posturing and landing elbows as Brooks is trying to get himself out. John, it looks like the left arm that was is damaged. The left arm of EJ Brooks. This one might be over. Oh, it's over. No doubt about it. They've yeah. already waved it off. You can see when EJ got up, he was having a hard time with his left arm. He was holding his left elbow. He got back to his stool, said something to his corner, and right away they waved the fight off. So Robbie was right. That was a great job. <laughs> <laughs> in the first round. It was honestly, it was an yep. incredibly impressive performance by Logan against a very good wrestler in EJ Brooks, just controlling position, using superior body positioning, yep. creating I'm heavy you, situations. You it though, that's what right? we call yeah. those heavy but hips. You saw, that's the he first step. Now you'll be able to get to it. The ability of the escape route for he's Brooks fucking, just did everything fire. right, landed big shots. Logan Storley, 11 and 0, and only getting better. He is going to be a force here in the Bellator cage. Six and 0 as a Bellator fighter, victorious over E.J. Brooks here tonight inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. Michael C. Williams makes this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, with the blue corner, unable to answer the bell for round number two due to injury, it comes to an end officially. Five minutes, round number one. The winner by TKO, still undefeated, Logan Storley. Logan Storley. Watch out for the storm, because it is just picking up momentum every single fight. There he is with his mentor. See, that's the smirk right there that, <laughs> that I was that talking is the about. Smirk. Against Tyrell Fortune. Right now it is time for Tyree Fortune. He fights at 205 pounds. Tonight his opponent, John Chuck Campbell. Yeah, Chuck Campbell, six foot four, very long, got a very long reach, and his stand-up is outstanding. Official introductions once again from the voice Michael C. Ladies and gentlemen, now light heavyweight set for three five-minute rounds here at Windstar World Casino and Resort. We go now first to the blue corner at six foot four, weighing in 205.6 pounds. His professional record early on, undefeated at two and zero oh from San Jose, California, Chuck Campbell. 
And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner. At six foot two, weighing in 205 pounds even, he too stands undefeated, bringing four victories without a defeat. Fighting out of Portland, Oregon, Tyree Fortune. Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. In charge, your referee, Michael Bell. Michael Bell, our referee for Tyree Fortune and Chuck Campbell. Campbell out of AKA Fortune out of ATT Portland. That would be American Top Team Chris led Ray, by Ray, Fabiano Scherner. Ray, Ray. Of course, Ray. the home of Chael P. Sonnen and Austin, the gentleman Vanderford, who we will see fight one week from tonight. Halfway around the world. Halfway around the world. Very, just a, a beautiful start. You saw Tyree in this trying to step it off to his right. You saw Chuck Campbell saying, oh no, and just blasting back to his left to cut that angle off. This is gonna be Tyree working towards getting a takedown off of using his hands in the striking range, and Chuck just trying to pick him apart when he does that. Fortune in the red gloves, Campbell 2-0. and As a professional, both of his wins in Bellator in the blue gloves. Division I football player at the University of Idaho. That little demonstration of that beautiful right high kick shows you when Chuck Campbell wants to go, he's got speed and he is fast. We talked to Tyrell about the emotions of fighting on the same night, same card as his brother. And he said to us, the first time there really wasn't a huge effect back at Bellator 193. He said for this one tonight, he's been a lot more involved. His brother, of course, trains in Portland. Tyrell trains in Tempe, Arizona. But he said they've been on the phone a lot more. They, they've talked strategy a lot more. So Tyrell much more invested in Tyree and his performance here tonight. That, not that he wasn't invested before, but they've been much more in contact this time. Well, it's one of those, it's so hard to explain to certain people. It's like, why isn't he helping his brother? And he wants to, but his brother's got to listen to him. Yeah. You know, and sometimes the brother, the, the last person the brother wants to listen to is his older brother. So there's a lot of, you know, complexity to their relationship. They're both doing the same thing and fighting MMA. And it's just going to be a matter of time when Tyree and Tyrell, they do train together and you know, they're, they're getting information and learning from each other. But I don't think it's really Tyrell that's going to be making the decision when that happens. That's a great point. Tyrell and Tyree, the first brothers to fight at the same event here in the Bellator cage. That is the aforementioned Bellator 193, where they both won by unanimous decision. Campbell 2 0, Fortune 4 0. We've seen a lot of what we call outside foot here, meaning both guys are trying to establish bringing their front foot to the outside of their opponent. So you're seeing Chuck Campbell trying to use his left foot to step outside and land the kicks to Tyree, and Tyree trying to step outside with his right foot and land the straight left hand down the pipe. Tyrell said, and I quote, I'll see if he wants to be in this sport after his fight tonight. And he was quick to admit that Tyree's transition has been a bit more difficult than his, and Tyrell, the much more decorated wrestler, as he entered into professional mixed martial arts. Well, no doubt he had the he had the pedigree in the wrestling, you know, all the accolades that you can think of coming out of, you know, Grand Canyon University and being a Division II champion and all those things, but this is not, you can bring those tools into the cage. It does not matter in the end what you bring, it's what you do. And Tyree is very good, but he at times, like right now, he's starting to sit and wait instead of go. And it's got to be that moment where you go. And that's what Tyrell is talking about with his brother. He won't listen to me. I tell him, you got you to get off. And he doesn't listen to me. Another nice kick to the body by Chuck Campbell. Every time you're seeing Chuck Campbell step to the outside and he throws that kick to the body, it's been landing. Tyree's been eating it well, but you can only eat it for so long. Good inside leg kick by Fortune. 
Combined 6 and 0 for these two light heavyweights. Campbell out of AKA. Fortune out of American Top Team Portland. That was the first time he really saw Tyree trying to get towards that takedown. You can see that he missed it, but it, he's got it on the mind. It's just he wants to get there in a smart, safe fashion. Fortune Brothers from Portland. That Grand Canyon University move that you spoke of, John, is what brought Tyrell to the desert. Hi. Round one in the books. Chuck Campbell actually broke so his right hand a you're week touch. and a half before his last fight in San Jose. So he ended up winning by a big knee that knocked out his opponent, Bruno Castillas. If your hand's broken, you might as well knee somebody. <laughs> and he did, and it moved him to 2-0. Oh. Round one. Round one, no doubt in my mind, Chuck Campbell got that round. He's the one that landed the heavier blows overall. Tyree, a lot of pressure coming forward. That doesn't matter if you're losing as far as what's landing and how heavy it's landing. Tyrell made a very good point, and, and, and it's not just something that he would tell you, but this sport, John, is a very selfish sport. Because there's nobody in the cage when they close the gate other than your opponent and the referee. So it's really all about your choices. And Tyrell said, I'm single right now. All I do is train. All I do is work out with Ryan Bader and watch fights. He goes, this is what it's about. And so for me to take any time away from that, even for my sibling, is something that I'm not prepared to do right now. No, it, it's, you, know, you say it's a selfish, it is a selfish act. In a good way. In, you know, in a good and bad, because it, it's hard on families, it's yes. hard on a lot of things, because you have to put so much time into it. It's also a lonely endeavor. You know, you're by yourself when you step in there, and all of it is on you to perform. And everything that you're trying to do is bring out that training that your coaches and everybody has put into you in that moment of time. And you can have that moment of time where, man, that 15 minutes just isn't your 15 minutes. You, you don't feel right, you're not healthy, and you just don't perform right. And the worst part is that it takes you a good three to four months to get that next fight so you can prove yourself again. So it, that's why that selfishness comes in because you want to be able to perform on that night that you're supposed to be performing. Oh, stop! stop. Oh, that was not, good. not good at all. Come on right over here, bro. Right over here. Tyree, can you do me a favor? Can you walk over here a moment? There's the knee coming up inside. You know, it's that lift, and sometimes the knee actually Very hits good. just above, but it lifts right. the cup minute, up okay. into the fighter. That didn't right here, feel Chuck. good. Tyree has you, up to five good. minutes to recover from to that blow. Right? Careful, he's right? the guy that's in control of the time. He's the one that's going to tell referee Mike okay? Bell when he's ready to go. Right. Time in. And he does it right away. A lot faster than I would. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I like it. The fight continues. Fortune in the red, Campbell in the blue. Big John gave round one to Chuck Campbell. Both men unbeaten in their professional careers. See, and this is the position right now. You don't have to be the better wrestler to be able to control this position. All you got to know is I keep my underhook, use my head as a third arm at times to control head position, just sit here and do work. Hit the knees to the thigh, do all of these things that just systematically break my opponent down. And he's wanting to out wrestle me, but I make him work hard holding on to me. That makes his arms heavy. And then when I separate, now his arms don't work as well in controlling his ability to be offensive and to defend against my shots. Michael Bell said they're not very active and moves them back to the center of the Bellator cage. John, when you and I were breaking down this fight, you said to give Chuck Campbell problems, you have to get inside. You have to somewhat fight in the phone booth. You do, and that's you can see right now, 
Tyree is trying to get to that position. He's trying, but he, he realizes, man, this guy's got power, he's fast, and I want to see things. And so he's just not committing to crushing that space like we had just seen with Anlikas. You saw him crush the space on Jordan Young. Just dominate that and make it to where you have no choice. I'm going to crush that position. Right now, Tyree's in that. He's trying, and at times he's doing, but he's not always holding on to what he gains. Inside late kick lands. Nice knee inside by Chuck Campbell. Tyree Fortune's first eight amateur fights were at heavyweight. He now fights at 205. His brother, of course, fights at heavyweight. Campbell looked to change speeds coming in on that combination. Yeah, it took a little bit of an odd, almost like he was looking for a trip on the outside. Weird foot movement, but didn't get him anything, but it didn't get, create any problems for him either. Final seconds of round number two. When Chuck Campbell decides to explode, it's fast. Well, he's got speed in his hands. Warren Brooks in the corner of Tyree Fortune. Pretty honest assessment right Tyree. there. I loved it. You know, I, so many times I hear coaches saying, oh, yeah, I think you barely got that round. Why are you doing that? Be honest. Say, go, if you don't know, now. say, I think you He's lost it. Jump. I He's would rather jump. have you think you lost it. You have to do more than think that that was enough to get that round. Hands up, Salim. Ready? And of course, as I mentioned, leader Fabiano Scherner. Had a successful professional career himself. Third and final round. You agree with Coach Brooks? I do agree with Coach Brooks. I believe Tyree Fortune is down two rounds to none in this. He needs to really start to get after Chuck Campbell, start to crush the distance, start to go after those takedowns and put him on the ground so you can do damage to him. Tyree said, and I quote, if you can't put me away, I'm coming and I'm going to keep coming for you. I'm going to turn this into a nasty fight, and that's what he needs to do here in this third and final round. He's got to find a way to get inside and be effective against Chuck Campbell. The Fortune Brothers wrestled together for two years. And Clackamas Community College. And then as John mentioned, Tyrell made his way to Grand Canyon University. They clinch. Yeah, they clinch and he goes for that clinch, gets that underhook, and then loses position. Chuck turns him, and now he's in that position where he's got an over-under, but he's not the one controlling where this fight's at. He doesn't have the position to really land a heavy knee at this time and the clock is just running on it. Well, physically, you can see the difference between the two guys. Well, I mean, you, look, there, there's no doubt. If this was a bodybuilding contest, Chuck Campbell <laughs> wins. But that, that has nothing to do. There's a lot of guys out there that don't have that picture-perfect body that can fight like a junkyard dog. And I can start naming them off, you know, but it's a matter of, yes, Chuck Campbell's got that, that perfect look. Let's go, guys. Let's but work. Tyree has a gas tank. He has the ability to wrestle well, but he's got to do it. It's that moment where it's like you're hesitating instead of just going and going after it and doing it. Go, guys. Gotta, at this moment, he needs to step on the gas pedal and just create problems for Chuck Campbell. Talking about Javi Ayala or Roy Nelson or... <laughs> It's a different kind of guy. Fabricio Verdum? No, I'm talking about not body beautiful. Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a, you know, and that's it. You know, get, people want it. People think big muscles win fights. They don't. You know, technique and skill and a gas tank. That's what wins. Plus, it takes a lot to carry all that muscle. Well, you, a lot of times you'll see a guy very muscular 
and you'll watch their body color change as the blood is being sucked by the heart and trying to pump out to those muscles, but it's the, the heart's having a hard time getting into everything, and you're gonna see the colors of that person. Black guys tend to turn a little bit gray. White guys get real red, and then they turn gray. It's a weird look when you're inside seeing what's happening to someone just by the color of their body. And then you have some guys who are the anomaly, like the, I don't know, um, that guy who's pretty successful from American Top Team. Been with Valerie Letourneau for a while. Go, Ellie Ward Merrill. Carries that muscle pretty well and wins a lot of fights. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hector Lombard be yep. another one. Yep. Carries the muscle really well. Yep. Yeah. Yoel is a Yoel's a freak. Let's just say that. Yeah, that. That would be a good way to say it. He's a monster. Fortune's in trouble here with just over a minute, at least in trouble on the scorecards. Uh, he needs to get this. He really needs to work hard to get this takedown. Start to change levels. Start to go out through the single leg. Go to the double leg. Get that chain wrestling going. Knees to the thigh, that's great, but that's not going to be what's going to win you this fight with 50 seconds left. Campbell's done a good job of implementing and sticking to his game plan. Yep. Right here, they're in the muscling over, and it's always that leverage. You've seen the underhooks by Tyree start to take and pull Chuck Campbell. Chuck's just physically muscling him back to the fence. Let's go work. Stop. It's a break. Final seconds of this three round fight. Boom. And look who it is that gets the takedown yeah. of the fight. The guy who trains with Daniel Cormier, Cain <laughs> Velasquez. <laughs> And those other great wrestlers. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, David Tiering, scores the fight 29 28. He sees the fight for Campbell. Your second judge, Chris Lee, scores the fight 29 28. He scores it for Fortune. Your third and final judge, Sal D'Amato, scores the fight. 29 to 28 for the winner by split decision. Tyree Fortune. Tyree Fortune by split decision. Uh, if you're asking me, Tyree Fortune, Christmas just came early. <laughs> you got that right. Our tail of the tape for Lucas Brennan and Jacob Landon. Look at the age of Lucas Brennan, 19 to 33, both featherweights outstanding on the ground. And now to our man, Michael C. Williams. From Windstar World Casino and Resort, Bellator 233 continues now inside the cage. Featherweight set for three five minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at five foot ten, weighing in 145.6 pounds. His professional record, oh, and two he fights out of San Antonio, Texas. The Jiu Jitsu Jesus, Jacob Landon. And across the cage, his adversary, go oh, take the red up. corner at five foot ten, weighing in 145.4 pounds as a professional. Early on, he stands at one and oh, fighting out of Frisco, Texas, Lucas Skywalker Brennan. Have fun, boy. Love you. Have fun. In charge, your referee, Jaron Bellow. On my cue. Highlight from Bellator 224. This was Lucas Brennan against Thomas Lopez, the rear naked choke, brings it in, cinches it down, look at the hip placement, that is tight, and that's why he gets the tap. Lucas Fighter. Brennan, that Fighter. was his pro Fight. debut. We'll see if he can do it again. Lucas Brennan, the southpaw in the red gloves, Jacob Landon will switch his stance frequently. He is in the blue gloves. Yes, 
Lucas Brennan said, I turned in probably my best performance to date in his Bellator debut, his professional debut, right in this building back in July. Submitting 31-year-old Thomas Lopez in three minutes and two seconds. Lucas Brennan has come up in the world of MMA because of his father, Chris Brennan. He's one of the pioneers is where I first met Chris Brennan at the Gracie Academy, I think back in 1993. And he's been part of this sport ever since. He's an outstanding Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He was an outstanding MMA competitor. And Lucas is just, he's just picked up the mantle. He's 3-0 as an amateur, now 1-0, looking for his second win as a professional. This should be a very well-matched fight. Both guys are very good with their ground games. Both guys are adequate on the feet. They still have things to learn, but they both are very aggressive. Once they hurt their opponent, they go after the finish. Lucas, just 19 years old. Son of the West Side Strangler. 19 of his 21 wins by submission. You talked about the Gracie lineage in the training for Chris Brennan, also trained under Marco Huas. He did. There was a lot of guys at that time. Luke is coming in, shoots and changes levels. Nice and tight. Still needs to just take his time on it. Just keep on going. Nice step over by Lucas Brennan. Now almost into the mount. He's only in quarter guard. That allows right to mount. Beautiful movement by Lucas. Brennan with the hooks in. He's got the back. Got the back of the head. Midway point of round number one. Lucas Brennan is a real. He's the real deal. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, that comes from his father, but his father will not give anybody anything. And his ground game is special. Now to the body triangle. Just a matter of taking his time. He's got two minutes on the clock to work the position. Just continue to pound, switch all that pressure in different ways, get the opening, and sink that choke in. Lucas brought up a very good point, John. He said his pro debut was his first experience with a five minute round. Well, it, it's different because a lot of times when guys are coming up in the amateurs, you get some with two minute rounds, some with three minute rounds. And it is a different experience going that five minutes because you're worried about getting tired. Everyone is. And you got to realize, hey, I just need to go do what I do. I train hard. He's making this tight round. It's, you see that palm-to-palm -palm grip? And it is all over! Lucas Brennan is 2-0! Tap out to the rear naked choke. Sorry, forearm choke. Tap out to the forearm Did not choke. need the full five minutes once again. Uh, that was a very painful choke. When you see what Lucas Brennan does, everyone looks at the, There's all kinds of chokes. What he's doing is what we'll call a short choke or even a bar arm choke, driving hit the, the edge of his bone into the neck area, collapsing the trachea, very painful. You can see how he's driving. That's a beautiful demonstration of what a short choke will do. That is pain. We also call it a soup choke because you're sipping soup for the next week. Two wins as a pro, both by submission. One against a 31-year-old tonight against a 33-year-old. Lucas Brennan making Papa Chris and the rest of his team very, very proud. Michael C. their dad. Michael C. Williams to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the short show. Brings on the tap, officially, three minutes, 38 seconds, round number one by submission. The winner, still undefeated, Lucas Skywalker Brennan. Short choke in a short amount of time. Three minutes and 38 seconds. Congratulations, Lucas Brennan. Tale of the tape for Sean Clements.
and Aaron McKenzie, born and raised in Oklahoma City, a member of Rafael Lovato Jr.'s team. 31-year-old against 35-year-old McKenzie with the three-inch reach advantage. Michael C. Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your final fight tonight here at Windstar World Casino and Resort. Three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot ten, weighing in 154.9 pounds. His professional record: three wins, one loss. Fighting out of Austin, Texas, Sean, the Wild Man, Clemens. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 155.2 pounds with a champ in his corner. He comes in tonight with six wins, one defeat, one draw, fighting out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, presenting Aaron McKenzie. And the referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee, lightweight fight to finish things off here tonight. Sean Clements, Aaron McKenzie. First round, buddy, you ready? Buddy, you ready? Fight! And we are underway. Blue gloves for Clements, red gloves for McKenzie. First time in the Bellator cage for Aaron McKenzie. Second time for Sean Clements. Yeah, first time for Sean Clements. He had a unanimous decision victory. Big went three rounds. Showed that he's got a gas tank. And a guy that's built like he is, he's got to carry a lot of muscle. He throws a lot of hard shots. But he's able to continue on every round, which is impressive. All four of his professional fights, John, have gone the distance. McKenzie is 6-1-1. One, and one and trains at Lovato's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and MMA in Oklahoma City, as well as the War Room in Fort Worth, Texas. To see that Sean Clements wants to keep this fight on his feet the entire time. Aaron McKenzie's gonna stand here and he'll throw with him. But if he gets the opportunity to take this fight to the ground, and especially being in the top position, that's where he wants to be. First fight in just over two years for Clements, who has trained with Roger El Matador Huerta, who will fight in a week in Israel, also has spent some time with Team Alpha Mir. To the body. He's huge for Team Alpha. Yes. He, he actually is. There's the champ. Very busy night for the champ. Right, right. And he got to watch the main event very closely. A fight that may happen again. Lovato Jr. insulted. Beautiful cut kick by Aaron McKenzie there. It's always good when you see a fighter use his hands and hide that kick behind the hands. That's when you become effective. He's landed a good left over the top. Both guys played college football. Sean Clements played in the Arena Football League for a while. Both men committed to the sport of mixed martial arts now. Nice little check hook by Clements. You just picked for team. I, I did what you did. There. <laughs> I mean, I got it. Well, you said it. I'm not that slow, but I see what you did there. Well, that cut kick is going to have an effect if this fight continues on through the rounds. Seeing Aaron McKenzie, he's targeting it in that same spot. McKenzie coming off a TKO win which earned him a lightweight title in a smaller organization. So looking to build on that momentum here in his Bellator debut. Red gloves for McKenzie, blue for the wild man, Sean Clements. Aaron McKenzie starting. 
starting to get that feel. You can see he's starting to relax inside of the cage during the fight. He's feeling good about the range, what's occurring. He hasn't even tried for a takedown. He's feeling good in the stand-up. He keeps landing that, that beautiful kick to the leg. You can see the damage that it's already done. Clements' left leg. Clements, when asked what he felt his advantage would be in this fight, said it is his explosive power and athleticism. Look at the hematoma on the left leg, Mike, of Clements. You can see the bruising, and you see every time he takes a step, it starts to pop out. Yep. He's got all the air. He's starting to already have a big problem with him stepping. And leg kick is taking its toll. Amazing how these great fighters can hit the same exact spot every time. <laughs> it's just not fair. And as the swelling grows, the target gets a little bigger. The man throws with everything. Throws with everything, but you could see the way he actually squared off when he was throwing because his leg dragged behind, which made it to where those shots didn't land. Watch the back of the head there. Ear through the ear. Stop. The takedown is there. He's got no legs. I don't think that's true. He's got one. I was because the one, same one of them is hurt. <laughs> Question is, will he? Can he go southpaw? Round two, final fight of the night, bonus coverage. Thanks for staying with us. There's a good reason why Sean Clements took this fight to the ground. He cannot take any more damage on that leg. Smart. Sometimes you get forced into areas and you go, well, got to bring the fight here. Aaron McKenzie looking towards that. Attack on the leg. He's not in position for it. Well, we know Sean is a tough dude. All four of his fights have gone the distance, and he has earned a victory in three of them. You saw Eric McKenzie trying to get up, and when he came off the ground, Sean Clemens landed a beautiful knee and quickly just dropped down to the ground. Almost made it to a referee, wasn't sure if he got hurt by it or if he was purposely going down. John's trying to set up the choke right now. He does not have that thing set. It's not going to work for him with where he's at. He would have to get up and engage his hips, and right now his hips are being controlled by the leg of Aaron McKenzie. That leg inside helps take the pressure off of any choke. Trying to work on the arm. Nice elbow inside by Clements. Worked himself back to a full guard. Twenty first time here at the Windstar World Casino and Resort, and it's been a good night of fights. Main card had a little bit of everything. Nice takedown by Aaron McKenzie. Almost lost it. He's got the back. One hook. Clements now, one hook in. Here's our second. Nope. Sean Clements holding on nice and relaxed. Now he's got that hook in. Still good, Sean. You're still good. 
McKenzie, four wins by knockout, two by submission. And he trains with one of the greatest grapplers in the world. Oh, there's no doubt. Every time he goes to practice, he's on the mat. <laughs> he's got somebody that is teaching him the very best of what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is. He's the nail a lot. And no, he's the nail if it's going against that guy all the time. Yeah, not even a lot. <laughs> Good body lock on the good side, John. Patiently trying to finish this fight. Nice, relaxed. The body triangle's in there. It's working well for him to control the position. Now he just needs to think about, don't worry about him holding that hand. If he's gonna hold that arm, and start to hit. Get yourself back on top. There you go, now he's back to the body triangle. Just work at getting your hands free. Sometimes it's really tough with those gloves. Guys can hold on at the wrist, and it's almost like a stopper on the end. And McKenzie really did the chance yeah. here. Looking to finish it right here, right now. It is all over. Aaron McKenzie by submission in his Bellator debut. Very nice finish. Look at him. See, it starts to open up, sees the neck get open, grabs a hold, doesn't even go for the lock, just goes palm to palm with it. Pull on that arm. Nice and tight squeeze, gets the tap. Congratulations, Aaron McKenzie. Michael C. Williams will make this one official one last time. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the rear naked choke brings on the tab. Officially, four minutes, 31 seconds, round number two by submission. The winner, Aaron McKenzie. Aaron McKenzie by rear naked choke in his Bellator debut. Let's go, Third career win by submission. Our tail of the tape for this, our first fight live on Paramount Network, Tyrell Fortune, a perfect 7-0, the man who said we can call him Sue, fighting in the Bellator cage for the second time. Unbelievable 7-0, look at the weight, that could help Sue, he's got a big right hand. Now to Michael C. Williams. Wow, nice throw. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network. From Windstar World Casino and Resort, we kick it off with heavyweights in the cage scheduled for three five-minute rounds brought to you by Boost Mobile, the switch that gives you more. And now, introducing first the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 264.9 pounds. His professional record, 15 wins, five losses, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Zoo, the eighth wonder, Anyanwu. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 247.7 pounds, undefeated as a professional. He brings seven victories without a defeat, fighting out of Tempe, Arizona, by way of Portland, Oregon, introducing Tyrell Fortune. Let's go, T Money. With the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Kerry Hatley. Kerry Hatley, our referee. We were teasing Azuna on Yanwu about going with Zhu, and he actually said, our all right, go ahead, guys. You ready? So, you ready? Zhu, the eighth wonder against Tyrell Fortune, and here we go. Fortune in the red gloves, Zhu in the blue gloves. Second Bellator fight. First since Bellator 49 over eight years ago for Zhu on Yanwu. Tyrell Fortune just fought 77 days ago. Tyrell Fortune is just athletic in everything he does. He's very fast for a heavyweight, very good footwork. Zhu on Yu loves to throw the big right hand. That is his weapon. 
He is a la a big country in Roy Nelson. When he hits you with his right hand, he hurts you bad, and he puts you away. So Tyrell Fortune needs to be very careful with that right hand. Move to his right a lot, taking away the power off of that big right hand. First main card appearance, the highlight that John talked about against Rudy Scaffold for Tyrell Fortune back in Bridgeport. Zoo was on that same card, but there was an opponent who missed weight badly, and so Tim Johnson was able to move up to face off against Vitaly Minikov. Thus, we see Zoo inside the Bellator cage for the second time here tonight. Heavyweight confrontation to get things started live here on Paramount Network. Glad you are with us on a Friday night. The 21st time we have been inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. I know a lot of people are here that are not happy that not a lot of action has happened right now, but you're seeing a lot from both fighters. Tyrell is trying to get Zoo to throw that right hand. He's trying to see the way he throws it, his setup, and he's just giving him little feints in and out. And you see Zoo trying to respond to him a little bit, but it's the speed difference that Tyrell is now seeing. He's seeing exactly how fast that punch comes out, and that's what he's going to start to set up his attack off of. You saw on the tail of the tape Tyrell Fortune weighing in at 247.7. Zoo on Yanwu. 264.9. In any fight, these little gloves can lead to a knockout. In a heavyweight fight, it happens quite often. <laughs> quite often and quite fast. Ah, beautiful right counter by Tyrell. That's why I said he, you can see how he is maturing as a fighter and setting things up. Look at the little feints he throws. And then he's using his feet to get him in and out. He's not leaning. He's not leaning back or forward. Just landed another good shot. You can see he's feeling it, shaking his head like, oh, yeah, I got you. I got the number. John, in breaking down this fight, you mentioned to me that you see Tyrell, the evolution of a mixed martial artist, but you see him starting to relax and feel more comfortable in the cage. Well, it's exactly what you've seen so far just in this fight. He came out. He was giving ground. He was trying to bait Zhu into throwing because he wants to see exactly how he sets it up, where, where he moves his feet. Now you're seeing, look who is stalking who. This is the progression of a guy that is not coming out trying to take someone's head off. He doesn't care about getting the fastest knockout. He cares about reading his fighter and picking him apart systematically as a smart fighter will do. And that's what Tyrell Fortune is. Big John, you were the ref for the debut inside the Bellator cage, which was the professional debut for Tyrell Fortune back in November of 2016, a first round TKO, by the way. And on that very night, Trevor Lawley of AZ Combat in Tempe, Arizona, told me, Goldie, this guy's for real. And he was not lying because he has just gotten better and better. Uh, I will tell you, the guy that I was in the cage with is nothing like the guy that we're seeing tonight. He is a completely different fighter. He was a it's wrestler. It's like he's gotten there. better and better. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great <laughs> comment. I wish I'd come up with it. He's now the complete MMA fighter. He can wrestle. He's got submissions, but he can stand up, and he doesn't have to rely on any one element. He can do them all. That's when you become dangerous. Do you think training with Ryan Bader three days a week might help that? You think? Yeah, think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Mutual respect here in round one. Stop. Tonight's corner cam is brought to you by Boost Mobile, the switch that gives you more. Trevor he needs to let you come in, plant, and throw that big bomb, right? Trevor is such a up, good coach. He's so knowledgeable, show, especially in the stand-up game. He's outstanding at taking guys that hey. don't know the stand-up and just putting them through the basic paces to the point where they become very good. There was an exchange where Trevor said to Tyrell, I need more movement, and Tyrell goes 3-2. 
<laughs> which is excellent right, because two, that two, means that he's learning. Uh, not only that he's learning, he knows, he understands exactly what he means and what he needs to do as that offensive counter when he gives that little shake. Away. Round two. Red gloves for 7-0. and oh. Tyrell Fortune blue gloves for 15 and 5. Azunya Anyanwu, the Nigerian, switch stance, winner of six of his last seven fights. So this is where we talk about speed kills. When you're Anyanwu right now, you're hesitant because you realize, oh, this guy's fast. And when he's countering me, he's actually touched me before mine's getting to him after, I, even though I started first. And that always sets you on your heels and makes you not offensive. So you gotta get past that and say, I just gotta go forward and I gotta throw. Tyrell Fortune told us earlier this week there are no distractions on his path to being a world champion. All he does is train. He goes to the gym every day. He's single. And so it's all about getting better, all about improving, and working with the double-double champ and the guys at Power MMA is a bonus on top of his training at AZ Combat Sports. He's learning new things all the time. That's one of the things that is best about when you talk to Tyrell. He's loving the fact that he's learning. He, every time he learns something new, he wants to talk about it. He wants to talk about what, how he's doing it and who he learned it from. Nice straight right hand down the pipe. Again, no big looping punches by Tyrell. Everything's nice and tight. Beautiful straight right hand that earned it back. His brother Tyree, a winner by split decision earlier good. tonight. Tyrell turning it on, looking to finish. And it is all over. Tyrell Fortune is 8 0. Yep. Just like that. Tonight's fight replay brought to you by the Marines. Watch the straight right, straight down the pipe, touches him. You can see that sets on Yan Wu back on his heels, drives him into the fence, and from that point, off of that straight right hand, things started going downhill fast for Zhu on Yan Wu. See Tyrell just 156. cutting the angle on him, coming straight, landing the knee, big right hand. Uh, multiple you shots, you finish it, get the referee to step head. inside. The Marines winning battles for our nation and for all its people. We will make this heavyweight fight official. That is coming up next. Win number eight for Tyrell Fortune inside the Winstar World Casino and Resort to make it official. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Kerry Hatley steps in, waves off the contest officially. One minute, 56 seconds. Round number two for the winner by TKO. Still undefeated Tyrell Fortune. Fifth win by knockout. Here is Tyrell with Big John. Thank you, thank you. I am here with your winner, Tyrell Fortune. You got to talk to me about your calmness in this fight, because from the start, you just were relaxed. Yeah, man, I'm out here taking my time, reading, seeing what he gives me, and then look for the kill. There's no rush to knock somebody out. It's going to come. And it, de it definitely came. I was listening to you in the corner with your trainer, Trevor, and he's talking about, I, just give me a little shake of back, and you said, e th three, two? You're reading everything. You know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, that's just fighter's IQ. I listen to my coach and let him tell me where to go, and we just work from there. Eight no now in this cage. Tell me, what is next for Tyrell Fortune? Well, since nobody else wants to fight me and Tyson Fury's looking to get in the cage, Scott Coker, I'll take him out real quick. That sounds good to me. I want to tell you that was a beautiful performance. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your winner, Tyrell Fortune. Third knockout. In round number two, inside the Bellator cage, there he is with Trevor Lawley, Tyrell Fortune. Congratulations, indeed. Our tail of the tape for this featherweight 
fight 37 year old Leslie Smith against 36 year old Arlene Blenko. John, can I just beat you to it? Go ahead. Other than the height, everything else is virtually identical. Yeah. You want to toss to Michael C again? No, you got it. All right. Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network now features featherweights inside the cage scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first the blue corner at five foot six, weighing in 145.3 pounds. The former Bellator World Title Challenger stands with 12 professional victories, seven losses from Penrith, Western Sydney, Australia. Presenting Dean Edgar Piss. Blanco. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145.5 pounds. Coming off her successful return to the Bellator cage, she enters tonight with 11 professional victories, seven defeats, and one draw. Fighting out of San Francisco by way of Oakland, California. Introducing Leslie, the peacemaker, yeah. Smith. In charge of the action, your referee, Michael Bell. Michael Bell, our referee, for what may very well be a top contender matchup at 145 pounds. Smith and Blenko. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. And here we go! Leslie Smith in the red gloves, Arlene Blenko in the blue gloves. It's gonna be very interesting to see how much pressure Leslie Smith can put on Arlene Blenko because there's no doubt in my mind, Arlene Blenko has the faster hand, she's the faster fighter. One way to take that away is to pressure her and make it to where she cannot get her shots off. One thing, John, you talked to Leslie Smith about was the little head movements she utilized in her win over Sinead Cavanaugh. Yeah, it was such a big difference in her fighting style, and she has gotten that from her time with Carrie Melendez. All of the training she's doing with Carrie has really changed her ability in the stand-up. You can see right now, little feints, little head movements, left and right. Those are big difference makers because her head used to be right down the center line and she was a target and she would take it to try to give one. Now, she's actually slipping them and not taking the damage and it's really working for her. There is one of her two head coaches, Gilbert Melendez. Carrie is right behind her husband. Has a nice right hand that Arlene Blanco landed though. And as they come back with a right left high kick. Ducks under and comes over with the overhand right. And again, look for that same move. One of the things with both of these ladies had nothing but respect for their opponent. They all talked about how tough each one was, how good they were, how hard they hit. So they knew what they were getting into stepping into the cage tonight. Nice jab by Anger Fist. Good pressure by Leslie Smith. And this is where if there's a place where I think there's a difference in these two fighters, it is on the ground. Leslie Smith has a very good ground game on top. She's very heavy with her hips. She understands position and she sets submissions up very well. Arlene is a good defensive wrestler, so it's gonna be very hard for Leslie to get her down to the ground. Well, when you work with the likes of Gilbert Melendez and Jake Shields on a daily basis, you're gonna get a pretty good ground game. <laughs> you, you work out with those people enough, it just kind of just comes in little waves. Eventually, you'll get there or you end up leaving because it's just Let's go, ladies, let's murder. work, action. Leslie just likes to throw hands. She does, you know, and I've talked to her about that. I said, but you've got a great ground game. She said, I just love standing up and throwing my hands. Nice job by Arlene to get her feet back there. That was a nice little move by Leslie. This is the kind of fight that Leslie is very good at, that grinding. Just keep on working, knees inside, put pressure, make her work, get her arms heavy right now. Go grab it, stop. From being we'll able to right? have to hold on to Leslie and hold her weight. Her, Arlene's arms are working hard right now, and that starts to tend to slow down your punches too. 
Both women welcome a brawl. Arlene Blenko said, and I quote, I will be the Bellator featherweight champion. No one will stand in my way. Her only setbacks in the Bellator cage, not once but twice to the champion, Julia Budd, the first time she was basically fighting on one leg, and to Marlos Kunin, who she almost knocked out, John, and then she joked about the fact that Marlos took her arm home as a souvenir. <laughs> yeah, she did. She goes, uh, she still has it. <laughs> well, she looks pretty good fighting with one arm. Good pressure by Smith, as you somewhat alluded to, partner. That is one of the things. It's so it's so hard to understand what it's like to have someone that you you're hitting, and you are putting good shots on, and they just walk through yeah. everything you're doing, and they keep coming after you. They give you no moment to breathe. That is something that you have to get used to. You have to have people in practice putting you through those paces, or it will break you in a fight. Let's go, ladies. Let's go. Two things come to mind when I think of Leslie Smith. Mexico City and that exploding ear against Jessica I. And she was so proud afterwards when it was all stitched up. But more notably, she was pretty much the only person who would fight Chris Cyborg back in 2016 in Chris's hometown of Curitiba, Brazil. Yeah, that was, that was the whole thing. Nobody wanted to fight her. And Leslie goes, I'll fight her. Yep. Good first round. Very good. Nice shots by both. Good finish for Angerfritz. Nice spinning elbow. Good. How you doing, Arlene? You good? Both women had their moments in round one, but who gets it in your mind, partner? You know, both women so did have their moments. I got to give it you to ready? Leslie. She was right. the one that with the dirty boxing inside. She landed good shots. Arlene had her moments at spinning back elbow at the end. I give it to Leslie Smith, 10-9. Leslie Smith in the red gloves. Arlene Blenko, the Australian in the blue gloves. 20th professional fight for both women. 145 is absolutely loaded, especially with the additions of Chris Cyborg and now more recently, Kat Zingano, the last fighter to beat Amanda Nunes. Kat Zingano is going to be an outstanding addition to the 145-pound class here in Bellator. She is so good at everything. Her wrestling is super strong. Her submission game is great, and her striking is powerful. And oh, by the way, she has a win over former world champion Misha Tate as well. So, so you're saying she's pretty good? I'm saying she's got a chance. <laughs> And it's not one of those one in a million things. Gilbert Melendez said, let's utilize the clinch a little bit more, but then break and throw some strikes. You can break her down. You can break her spirit if you put the pressure on her. I like what Arlene is trying to do. Arlene's trying to use that jab. Every time Leslie starts to make a move, you see her start to try to pop that jab, that right hand straight out. These are the types of things when you have someone that's pressuring you, you got to say, it's okay, I'll let them play. I'm just going to put shots on you. I'm not going to try to knock you out with anything, but one of them eventually could do that. Glenko has not been stopped since the aforementioned fight against Marlos Kunin, which was her second Bellator fight. She had no amateur fights. And what you're seeing, that there's a difference between the first round and what occurred and now what's happening in the second round. Arlene was getting into the brawls with Leslie. That plays into the favor of Leslie Smith. Now you're seeing Arlene saying, hey, I was a good boxer. I'm going to utilize my boxing skills, use my jab. Nice right hand by Arlene and keep her off of me. And she's being effective with this technique. True champions learn from setbacks and they evolve as fighters. Blenko said since the last Julia Budd fight, a fight in which she feels she wasn't quite ready to be an MMA champion yet, she has grown exponentially mentally 
for Leslie Smith. She said, I was never worried about defense until I fought Chris Cyborg, which takes me back, John, to what I mentioned to you earlier, those little head movements she's using now. Well, she, those head movements made a big difference, but you can see that left jab of Arlene Blanco is starting to do damage now to the right side of Leslie Smith's face. She's got a little bit of a hematoma under the eye. The swelling is starting, and that's going to continue if Arlene continues to use that jab and pop that same spot. Glenco, four of her last five wins by knockout. The last one in 22 seconds. The two-time boxing world champion. And she just pumps that jab over and over. Good combination followed by the kick by Leslie Smith. I mean, you see how she's firing back and keeping Leslie at that distance. This is the way that Arlene Blanco can win this fight. All of this work that she's doing right now, this is scoring, it's adding up, and she's keeping Leslie from getting into that dirty boxing range that she's so good at. Which is what Gilbert Melendez talked about between Wanted rounds do. when we were at commercial. Let's get inside, use the clinch, and do damage from there. That's where Leslie has an advantage in this fight. And you look and you go, if you're Arlene and you can keep that from occurring, you've got a very good chance of walking away the winner. You just look at the way Arlene Blanco throws that jab. It's just beautifully shoots out straight, comes back on the same rail. Everything about it shows that she is a talented stand-up fighter. Nice right hand. Thirty seconds on the clock, round two. Leslie trying to get inside. Blanco says, "Not this time." Leslie trying to get it into that that dirty fight, just making it a brawl. Arlene saying, "Nope, not going to fall into that into this round." Good round for the Aussie. Arlene Angerfist Blenko. Time. Partner, we even? We are all even going into the third round. Third round, you ready, Arlene? Five ready, minutes on, remain. Red gloves for Leslie Smith, blue gloves for Arlene Blenko. The Kiwi James Tahuna said, keep doing what you're doing. Keep that distance. There you see Big John's scorecard. 10-9 round one to Smith, 10-9 round two to Blenko. Keep it at boxing distance. Arlene kept saying, Coach Jimmy, Coach Jimmy, and we never called him Jimmy on the air. <laughs> That's because he beat us up. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> Leslie getting real wide with those shots. She's trying to pull Arlene into that brawling style. Arlene is just not falling for it. And you can see that left jab is yeah. the difference maker in this fight right now. Snapping the head of Leslie Smith back with that jab. Yeah, beautiful leg. Nice right hand by Leslie. That connected, but you saw Arlene responded off of it. And that jab not only is doing damage, John, but it is it is preventing Leslie Smith from moving inside into clinch range. Which is exactly where she needs to be. This is good for Leslie right yes. now. Double unders, we'll see if she can do anything from this position. Nice inside or outside trip, pull her back. Good balance by Arlene Blanco. Tyson Pedro, also one of the coaches of Blanco. Leslie gets close. She starts to upset the balance of Arlene, and Arlene gets it right back. All of that, you know, normally if someone gets that pressure, they're going to end up falling down. This is what that training does. It just programs your body to respond to that pressure and that balance shift and get yourself back. This is where Leslie needs the fight to be. Let's go, ladies. Let's work. And you can see Arlene tries to break, and she eats a left. Beautiful left, right, straight down the pipe. Nothing being swung out wide by Arlene. Shortest route's going to get there the fattest, fastest. Yep. And that whole straight line thing that they used to teach us about four decades or so ago for us. Yes! 
This is your round, baby. Baby, you got it. Gilbert Melendez throwing some verbal motivation towards his fighter, Leslie Smith. Very close. Round number three, just past the midway point. This is still anybody's round. Absolutely. Both women known to finish their opponents by knockout. Both own one career submission. Dirty boxing here. Let's go, ladies. Let's work. Action. Marlene getting some good shots in. Action. Yep. <laughs> Leslie broke out and threw that elbow, which is something Gilbert Melendez talked about earlier. Nice. And Blanco looks light on her feet and very fluid tonight, John. This is her kind of fight. This is where she's best. Nice kick. She blocked it with the hand, but it still got a little bit through. Arlene Blenko, this is the kind of, she's, she's not used to people saying, I want to fight on the feet with you. She's used to people trying to take her down all the time, and so this is working out very well for her. She's feeling comfortable. Arlene wanted to represent Australia on the Olympic boxing team. Fell short of that. So her gold that she seeks is Bellator gold. Still a really potential third fight with Julia Budd. Really good technique by Arlene. A lot of power on her shots. She's still got snap on those punches. <laughs> 30 seconds remain. can't tell you how impressed I am with the way that Leslie brings pressure and the way that Arlene dealt with that pressure. Both women putting on beautiful performances here. Best performance we have seen from Arlene Glenko as they go the distance. The official decision of this featherweight showcase from here at Windstar is coming up next. 21st time the Bellator cage has been inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. Let's take a look at Big John McCarthy's unofficial scorecard. He gave rounds two and three to Anger Fist. Arlene Blenko, let's see if the judges agree. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. All three judges at cage side, Chris Lee, David Tadine and Sal D'Amato all see it the same 30 to 27. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Arlene Engerfest Blenko. Big win for Arlene Blenko. And Big John will visit with Engerfest. I'm here with your winner, Arlene Blanco. Arlene, that was a beautiful performance. Your left jab was outstanding during that fight. Talk to me about the pressure that Leslie brought. Oh, first of all, thank you, Leslie. She's a warrior. We knew that she was going to be tough, and she was tough. Um, most girls get stopped in the track when I hit them, but she kept coming. So um, thank you, Leslie. Um, thank you to my corner, um, Jamie Dion and Coach Wink, too. Um, a big thank you to all my coaches and training partners back at home at Zoo Fitness. Hello to my kids at home, Kayla and Kian. And a massive shout out to my sponsors and all the fans. Thank you. Thank you everyone here, everyone back on social media who've sent messages and um, when who's called me, but yeah, thank you. Do you think that this win right here could set you up for the winner of Julia Budd versus Chris Cyborg in Los Angeles? Um, well, I'm number one contender now, so it was only ever between me and Leslie, and I got that win, so yeah. Um, I'll obviously leave it up to Bellator, and um, I'll just keep fighting who they put in front of me, but yeah, title shot again. I think I'm very deserving three wins in a row. I think you're very deserving, too. That was a beautiful performance. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up 
for Anger Fist, Arlene Blenko. In Arlene's two fights against the champion, Julia Budd, one was a majority decision, one was a split decision. Will she see Julia Budd or Chris Cyborg in 2020? Only time will tell tonight. Arlene Blenko, a winner by unanimous decision. Our tale of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening. You can take a look. He may be three inches shorter, but look at that reach advantage that King Mo has. That's one of the things that's made him special, and he uses it very well. Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA now presents tonight's co-main event set for three five-minute rounds contracted at 195 pounds. And now, live on Paramount Network, introducing the Blue Corner at 6'3", weighing in 192.7 pounds, making his Bellator debut. He breaks a professional record with 14 wins, 6 losses by way of Minneapolis, Minnesota. He fights out of Denver, Colorado, Andrew Capel. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot weighing in 193.3 pounds, a former light heavyweight world champion standing tonight with 21 professional victories, nine defeats, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, introducing King Mo Luol. Time to be a badass now. In charge of the action, your referee, Jaron Fallel. Bring it in, gentlemen. Defend yourself at all times, obey my commands. If you'd like to touch gloves, do so now. Come out ready to fight. King Mo, never been submitted. Andrew Capel, never been knocked out. Co-main event of the evening. Fighter, fighter, fight! Here we go! King Mo in the red gloves. Andrew Capel in the blue gloves. 21st professional fight for Capel, 32nd for King Mo. Nice front kick right off the start by Andrew Capel. Want to get King Mo's attention. He just did it with the bottom of his foot. Nice shot to the body by King Mo. Capel coming in on a four fight win streak, 10 of his 14 career wins by submission. Come on, man. Come on, man. Ooh. That's the big difference that I see between the two fighters is I know King Mo has got that fast twitch muscle fiber and when he wants to explode, he is still very quick. 13 career wins by knockout for King Mo. See Mo going to the body, coming up to the head. That's what a nice, beautiful, straight right hand. That's what a veteran fighter does. Start to break down that body. Oh, he's out. Oh, it is all over. He was out. It is all over. Just right there. Andrew Capel finishes King Mo. Let's go to the cage. That long wait. Definitely worth it for Andrew Capel. Tonight's fight replay is brought to you by the Marines. I'm here now, Scott. Watch this shot. It's a right hand. You see the low hands. Kick comes up. The body. Ola responds. Watch the right hand. Boom. There it hit. He is unconscious going down. He's trying to respond, but there is nobody home right now. Nothing is there, nothing's responding. You see Andrew Capel landing those shots. They were unnecessary, unneeded. Watch again the right hand. Bep, right on the button. Watch this in real speed. It's hard to tell. Bep, right there. The Marines winning battles for our nation 
and for all its people. Big smile on the face of Andrew Capel, winner by knockout. Tonight's corner cam brought to you by Boost Mobile, the switch that gives you more. Andrew Capel told us people don't really get to see my striking. That is no longer the truth. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. One minute, 22 seconds, round number one. The winner by knockout, Andrew Capel. He said it was hard for me to put this long wait into words, and King Mo has put the gloves down in the middle of the Bellator cage, signifying that this is the very last time for King Mo Luol, one of the greatest personalities in the history of this sport. Here's Big John. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, Andrew Capel. Andrew, sometimes it's all about getting an opportunity and making the most of that opportunity. You did that here tonight. How you feeling? Oh, man, without risk, you know, the opportunities don't count. So uh, hard to put into words. I just want to say first and foremost, respect to King Mo. I saw his debut in Japan years and years ago. The dude's a legend. He's marketed himself so well. He wrestled here in Oklahoma. So give it up for King Mo, please, and taking this fight. It was dangerous. He didn't have to. Thank you. Give it up. Up. You're absolutely right. He is a legend in the sport. Do you think this says something to everybody about what you can do in the middleweight division? I'm here, John. I'm here, man. And you know what? There's going to be more where this came from. It's been a long road, long road to be at a major organization, and I'm finally here. So uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone who believed in me. And uh, we're coming, Jen. We're coming. We're going to do it. Well, I would tell you, congratulations. That was a beautiful performance. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Andrew Capel. I am here with a legend, King Mo. I know that you're disappointed, but talk to me about this being your last fight. Yeah, man, it's my last fight. You know, I had a great time fighting, you know. It is what it is, man. Um, I had an opportunity to do a thing that Capel did to me. I did it to, his, um, to Travis View. And now it's time to get, get back. He got about me. Well, you have not only been an unbelievable fighter, you're a Incredible dad, but you're an incredible trainer with ATT. Are we going to see you sticking with the training and bringing young new fighters in? Uh, yeah, man. You know, we got uh, some talent at ATT. Uh, my boy, Sydney Outlaw, is fighting next week. So shout out to Sydney, um, Ricky Bandejas, um, Jordan Young. We got a lot of talent, man, and uh, I'm going to help try to build them. Well, I want to tell you, I was able to share the cage with you 11 times. You were always fantastic. I want to tell you, it was always an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend, King Mo Lawal. King Mo Lawal. With his daughters, Abdullah, Amanat. What a story he has been throughout the years. And that's what it's all about, these two baby girls. One of the greatest personalities in the history of the sport and he is going nowhere any time soon in fact we're going to see him in the corner of one Matchup. Salter, 34, seven years the elder of the dangerous Dutchman. You can see with the record, both guys are outstanding. Van Steenis with that reach advantage will try to utilize it in his stand up. Once again, here he is, the voice, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA live on Paramount Network. 
from Windstar World Casino and Resort. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Sanctioned by the Chickasaw Nation Office of the Gaming Commissioner, Mr. Scott Colburn. And now, introducing first, the Blue Corner. At six foot one, weighing in 185.4 pounds, his professional record, 12 victories, just a single defeat, fighting out of Rotterdam, Netherlands, Castello, the Spaniard, Van Steenen. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the threat corner at six foot one, weighing in 185.3 pounds. As a professional, he stands with 16 victories, four losses. By way of Gardendale, Alabama, he fights out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Introducing John Sauter. Let's go, John. Let's go. And the referee in charge of the action, Jason Herzog. Okay, fighters gone over the rules in the back. There were no final questions from you, Blue. There were no final questions from you, Red. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Come out ready to fight. John Salter, Costello Van Steenis. Main event of the evening, right here on Paramount Network. First round, fighter, you ready? Fighter, you ready? Fight! Here we go! Costello comes moving forward quickly. He is in the blue gloves. John Salter in the red gloves, the southpaw. You saw Costello run out to the center to command the center of the cage. It's a smart move by him, and you see the wide base. That will affect his kicks to a point, though. In London, Van Steenis snapped Mike Shipman's 13-fight win streak. Yeah, Mike Shipman had not, he lost his first fight ever and had not lost since that first fight. 13 fights in a row, and boom, two elbows. Deciding factor in that second round of that fight quickly. Nice head kick. Here comes Van Steenis again. Coming after him very hard, very fast. Careful though, that's where you can make the mistake. You've got to remain composed against John Salter because this is where John Salter is best. When he get his hands on you, press you to the fence, this is his world. Salter has finished all 16 professional wins. Let's cook him, no hurry. Good head Five of his six finishes in Bellator have been in the first round. Five of them by submission. You saw John Salter utilize that outside trip to take Van Steenis down. He's very good with it. It's a technique that he has just perfected when he gets against the cage. And now it's the question of can Van Steenis get to a point of getting himself back to his feet without making that mistake that gives Salter the ability to put in a submission and end this fight? He's in a good spot right here, right now, John. Here's coach. You're right where you want to be. Chip away. John, we're two minutes in. That's a way to chip. Good pressure. What you're seeing, man, Steen is sitting on the ground. He's throwing shots up, but there's no way that that transfers to as good a shot as what John Salter is able to do, utilize with his body position and gravity. Adding a coach to the mix, a true head coach, has made a world of difference for John right Salter. There, he said in my screen. third round against Rafael Lovato Jr., right it showed the world that I needed somebody. I started to make bad decisions. The, the flying knee, the jumping elbow thrown yeah, by Lovato Jr., John admitted he panicked. Well, he did, you know, that happens in fights, but you see what he's doing right now. John Salter is forcing Costello Van Steenis to try to get out off of the use of that leg. He's, he's turked his leg, and he knows when Van Steenis, which way he can only go, and when he does, he's gonna take his back going into that position. So Salter is just slowly pressing Van Steenis into a position that he can take his back and then try to end this with a choke, and that's Van Steenis saying, oh, no, no, I see it, and I'm not gonna give you what you want. Van Steenis is up. 
You talked about those elbows, vicious elbows against Shipman. They were with his back against the cage. Well, you already saw earlier in this fight, Costello Vanstinas hurt John Salter. So he knows already, oh, I can hurt you with my hands. I can get my hands on you. I can do damage to you. But he has to get separation. Right now, this fight is working the way John needs it to work. Going for that outside trip again. This time it didn't work. But this is the fight that John Salter needs to win. Vanstinas needs to get that separation. Nice little choke attempt by Vanstinas. You see as Salter comes out to the side, that relieves the pressure on the choke. There is no choke there anymore. Salter has been submitted three times, most recently by the champion. You got to go all the way back to 2010 for the only time he was finished by knockout, that by Gerald Harris, who is here in the building tonight. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. 30 seconds in round one. Salter just doing what he does, continuing that pressure. He's not hurting Van Stienis. Van Stienis is trying to punch Salter's hand with his head. But you look and you go, this is exactly the fight that is going to get John Salter that win. Best part of these final seven seconds to start a round two will begin on its feet. Partner, you were perfect. Dial in the words from the corner of Take John round, Salter. Buddy, ready. buddy, ready. Fight! Well, they were right. That was the kind of round that John Salter needs throughout this fight. Again, Van Stienis just running to the center of the cage, but he needs to be under control when he launches his attacks. He cannot come forward too fast. That will play into the takedown for John Salter. Round one, 10-9, Salter? Absolutely. Head kick. Costello looks for the flying knee. See it right now, Costello just he stood there like, oh, you're not, you can't hurt me. Get your back off of the cage. Get yourself back to that center position. Start to fight smart. Why would you stay here with John Salter in the top position right now. This is not where you want to be. This is not you fighting a smart fight. Your job is to separate from him, get him back to his feet, move yourself back to the center of the cage. Right now, you're playing into John Salter's role. Nicely done by Salter, grabbing the leg and keeping this fight on the ground. Van Stina said he has been training with some very good Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts from the Netherlands. The same group that Gegard Mousasi was training with for his fight with Rafael Lovato Jr. And this right here, normally you're gonna see Van Stienis likes to control when he has that, he sees that wrist that uh, Salter's trying to lace, he's gonna tuck it inside and he tries to roll, but where Salter's at, it's not gonna work for him. And Salter knows that he likes that half Granby roll and is gonna be ready for it and move with it. Working one hook. John Salter's in beautiful position right now. He can take his time, open up with strikes if you want. You don't have to go for the submission. This is what I was talking about. Set your base, get your position, and then go for your submission. Van Stienis has not been defeated since his seventh professional fight nearly four years ago. He is in a very bad spot here. Right now, John doesn't have a choke. He's kind of looking towards a face crank with it. It's not there. He's trying to make him uncomfortable. He's decided, I don't want to have both hooks inside. He's going where he's got that half, uh, half guard to the back, which is going to keep him in place. Grab all three fingers, brother. Yeah, he's got problems. He's got to get rid of that hand quick. He's got to be careful. You make that little mistake, it can end fast for you. 
decided to go back to double hooks with the legs. And Stinas gets rid of it. And Stinas right now should move. He should try to turn into Salter before he gets that leg back in position, which John Salter. Now he's got it under the neck, John. It's only a little bit. John Salter should go palm to palm. There you go. He starts to get this choke. It starts to get very tight quickly. Under the chin, pardon me, on the neck. Costello fights it off for now. Nice defense by Van Stinas. They're gonna shake him off. Salter can look to go towards the Sulu a stretch right here. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his legs in the perfect position, but that Sulu F stretch is there for him. All right, let go of it. Good defense by Costello Van Stinas. Salter looking for a triangle. Smart by Costello Van Stinas getting back to his feet. Right now, his arms are heavy. His legs are a little bit filled with blood. Van Stinas needs to now start to utilize that great stand-up he has. Look and look at the movement of Salter now, John. Yeah, How it is drastically labored. slowed down. Labored is absolutely the proper turn. So Salter wisely gets it back to the ground. There comes Van Steenis with that, but now he's set up in an arm triangle. Salter's losing the arm triangle, but he's gonna come out in the mount position. Ten seconds. John Salter once again the aggressor. Five minutes remain. Costello needs to do something, John, right here, right now. Yeah, Costello, in my opinion, he's down two rounds to none, and he needs to just be patient with his stand-up, but effective with it, meaning you've got to reach out and touch him. you just got to figure the right moments and start to create big problems for John Salter because you have to end this fight. Big swing and a miss. Just barely, because right now, Salter's tired from all of that groundwork, trying to utilize the legs, the arms with the choke. He was squeezing hard. Didn't work for him, and so he burned a lot of gas. Bottom of that one. Yeah. John's in trouble here. He is tired, and he's taking shots. And here, this is where Van Steen needs to settle down. Don't go forward too fast. Be smart in your attacks. Costello said, I think I am a better fighter than him in general. He's probably a better grappler and a better wrestler, but this isn't a grappling or wrestling match. This is a fight. Well, it's, it's been a grappling and wrestling match so far because John Salter has made it such. But now it's up to Van Steen is to say, okay, I let you play your game. Now we're going to play mine, and we'll see what happens. That's my point, partner. Exactly. You're so smart about this. Well, uh, I've, I've been learned very well by you. <laughs> Under three and a half. Van Stinas knows that he needs to do something big here, though. Salter looking towards that outside trip. You see double underhooks, and he is clasping his hands in the overhook position on Van Stinas to more keep Van Stinas close to him than it's to try to take him down. Bloodied up a bit, John Salter from some of the strikes here in the first couple of minutes. Oh, that was a this round ball. kick to the that foot hit the solar plex area of John Salter. We call that a ball kick as far as the ball of the foot is what struck the solar plex area. That did not feel good. And that's why you see John Salter try to actually pull down. He's still trying to get air. Big right hand by Van Steenis. This is when Van Steenis needs to be smart. Pull yourself back up. Make him stand up. Keep in mind the comment I made earlier that against Rafael Lovato Jr., Salter admitted after a flying knee and a, a jumping elbow that he panicked in the third and final round. 
Can he stay composed enough here in the final two minutes? And this is what's so hard when you fought Gage such a frustrating Gage fight for up. you against John Salter. You want to go, I just want to get him. And you need to be composed and smart in your attacks and just know I'm going to get you. That's a heavy kick. We may have to get him if the judges have it scored the same way you do, partner. Well, right now, Van Steenis even has a chance at bringing this into yes. a 10-8 round because yep. he's landed a lot of big, heavy shots. He has hurt John Salter with those shots. He just needs to continue on with that round, but that's going to stop. It's not going to win John Salter the round, but it's going to keep Van Steenis from getting that 10-8. And it's going to stop Van Steenis from kicking Salter in the face in there. <laughs> exactly. And Stinas needs to put his feet on the hip area and start to push off of Salter. Create space, get yourself back to your feet. Great binding his legs is only gonna keep him on top of you. That's a huge takedown for Salter, considering how this fight has gone. Absolutely, there you go, put foot on the hip. You see Salter immediately just passes it in the half guard. This is what, you know, when someone is so good on the ground and they get those opportunities, you put the feet on the hip, you've got to go. You can't wait. And someone like Salter realizes, oh, it's there, I'm going to pass. Now I'm in a better position to hold on to you, keep you down, and get my win. NAIA National Wrestling Champion. Some say half guard when it's a wrestler. I think Turk, and that's what Salter thinks. Turk control, and let's hold on for another 15 seconds. John Salter right now, he's not trying to end this fight. He's just trying to ride it out to the end and get his win. Smart fight by John Salter. John Salter, Costello Van Steenis, a tremendous main event of the evening that goes the distance. Back in 30 seconds to find out who will reign supreme in our middleweight matchup and move one step closer to a potential title shot. Plenty of damage done in the third round that's by all, Van Steenis. That's just about all third round damage that you're seeing. You know, looking at what John Salter did in the first two rounds, he did a great job of putting this fight exactly where he needed to, on the ground, and him in control of the positions for the most part. Every time Van Steenis did something, Salter ended up turning it and bringing him to the ground and putting the fight exactly where he wanted it. Almost got that choke. Van Steenis being tough, having experience, he's able to stop it, pull the hands back, and in the third round, Costello Van Steenis opened up and did a lot of damage to John Salter. And it was that last takedown that I think saved the fight for John Salter. I would think John Salter would agree. As our main event goes the distance, judges are rendering their decision. And here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, in tonight's main event, we'll go to your three judges. Chris Lee, Derek Cleary, Sal D'Amato, all three scored exactly the same, 29 to 28. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, John Salter. Huge win for John Salter. Survival mode in the final five minutes. He is with Big John McCarthy. I'm here with your winner, John Salter. I know that last round was not the way you wanted this fight to go. Talk to me about what you were feeling. What are you talking about? I thought that was perfect. I could really see his fist starting to fade in that third. Uh, I know I might have a few stitches, but uh, he's not able to hold any food after all those shots. You did exactly what you wanted to do, pressing him into the fence, taking him down, your first two rounds were textbook for your style.
the third round, you got that takedown. Do you think that's the difference in this fight? Absolutely. I couldn't keep taking shots like that. He hits like a truck. I mean, probably the hardest I've ever been hitting here. But uh, props to him. What a stud. And I'm uh, just glad I got the win tonight. You did get the win. It was an outstanding win against, as you said, he is a stud. What do you think this should do for you in getting back to that title contention? Uh, we'll see. I saw Rafael around here tonight, talked to him. Probably the guy I respect the most in the sport, but I'd like to fight him again. Well, we would all love to see that. Congratulations on a hard fought and beautiful victory. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John Sullivan.